The reason why Nepal has not worked. I can tell you down for free. I'll be 47 years later this month. And for as far as I can remember, it is only curses. People reign on Nepal. He no go better for Nepal. Now that they've increased tariff, oh, courses have resumed. That's why when Fashola got there, he said, he said, there is, he said this place is jinxed. This place is jinxed. I'm an Arsenal fan. We're on top of the league. And the elephant is not coming down this time. Glory to God. But over the years, the biggest problem we have had are our fans. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! For the first time, I'm hearing positive things. Now, it is easier to be positive when things are working. They don't need you to speak when things are working. When you need to speak is when things are not working. When the storms of life comes against you, you will rise up and say, peace, be still. The drink that Jesus drank became in a well that gave him a mouth. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The more knowledgeable you are about the things of the Spirit, about the things of God, the more knowledgeable you are about who God is and who you are in Him, the stronger you become in the scheme of things. You, you, you come into that place where you cannot be destroyed. God is bringing you into a place where rivers are flowing out of you into nations. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Rivers flowing out of you into nations. Please listen to me. Tonight you have to answer this question. Do I want sustenance or significance? At his resurrection was the date of maturity. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Abraham prospered on the posted check. Daniel was delivered on the posted check. Hey! And he resurrected. Now we live in the reality of all that they hoped for. So we expect more. Tell someone I expect more. I expect better. Good morning. Welcome to day seven of the awakening. My name is Ngozi Otayemi. This is Holy Hill Church, and it is an honor and a privilege to get to bring church to you online. Thank you so much for joining us for the awakening. If you've been with us since day one, welcome to day seven. I'm sure you agree with me. It has been an amazing and impactful ride. And yes, this might be day seven, but it's not the end. God is just getting started with us. Today is going to be an amazing day. It is a, it's one long stretch of a service. So thank you for joining us. Service has started already in the main auditorium, so I'm not going to keep you much longer. Just to give you a quick reminder of who we have up today. We have P. Son himself, Pastor Sunday Ogilibo, three strong sessions. We have Pastor Larry Rex on Nosoya, and we have Pastor Yemi David. Sit tight and watch what God is going to do in your life. Don't allow any distractions. This is a great time to share the link to as many people as possible so that they are a part of this and they get blessed by the word of God. And if you have any questions, comments and feedback, please feel free to engage with us in the chat box. We would love to get to know you. Have a blessed time in service. 
God bless you and meet you at the point of your expectation. I'll see you towards the end of service. Bye. Thank you for pouring out yourself upon our hearts, oh God. Manda sutole banda shaleha, ekale bonda sutali bredushta, le de sutole brando sutole bredushta, rabronda sutali bredish sutole baha, ekanda shanda na sotonde, ila days of talabanda shalebanda sotole bredushta. We came here with an expectation and we received more of you, oh God. We received more of you, oh God. Maso Tole banda sutole brediashta. We experience the different side of you, O God. Manda sutole branda sutole brediaria. Ela days at ala banda shala bariagada. Rabrondo sutole brediada. E kala bonda shale banda sutole ha. E kanda shala dadaria. A branda sutonde rianda na sutole braha. A braka bayagada shata labare. Rebondo sutole branda shele dele. Father, we thank you for the mighty deliverances. Oh, man, the sutole branda shaladaha. E brondo sutole branda sheleveria. Negative mindset have been set aside. Father, we thank you. Man, the sutale branda for setting people free from mindsets that are not of you, oh God. Ma sutole bredushta for the deliverance that we receive as a people. Man, the shaladada. Ra brondo sutole bredia. E kaladei shalabayaha. Because we know that we are different. Ela days at Ale Bradia, Le Bonda Suto Le Bradusta. We are a different people. Oh, Masuta, Ela de Shalada Daria, Rabonda Suto Le Bradusta. For your word that has been exposed to us. Oh, Makele Deza, Ela Dos at Ali Bradusta. For the instruction that we have received, oh God. For the corrections that we have received, oh God. Manda Shalade, Ela Deha, Ekala Donda Nianda Sotaha, Ela Banda Shalada Dada. Braka bayaka na shaladara and noza niada rekele deiza enda shaladaria rebondo sutole breha abroko suso ila deista ela bonda sutoleha ekala bonda suta egadiada shalada abranda shaladada abranda sutale bradia for the next phase of our lives Lord we are grateful because we know that it is settled mande sekele ela deha ila bonda suta ye enda shanda nanaria abrakabane ando sutole bradia because we know that we have left yesterday. Today, oh Makeba Riadada, because the future is much brighter than we can ever think about. A bronda sutaha, Ela de Shaladadia, Ekalaboha, Ekalabonda Shaladia, Enda Zotole Bariadada Shalada, A Brakabayaka Nasotaha, Ela Donda Dianda Nasutaha, Ela de Shaladadia, La Bronda Sutonde, Ela Donda Sutale Bredia, A Brakabayaka Nasotole Baha, A Branda Shanda. And the Zotole Bradiere, a Caladoz, a Ria, and the Zotole Breha, oh, Mashalebon, the Sutalebaha, Rebodo Sataha, Rekele, Rebron, the Sutole Bredusta, Rebrekele Brenda Suha, Ela de Shalabadabadaba, a Brando Sutole Brando Sutole Bradiere, Ela de Zatalabada Shalada, a Branda Sotole Bradiere. Ela days at Alabando Shale Badusa, Abronda Sutole Redishta. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to read something for us to us. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15 says, And what is the conclusion then? It says, I will pray with the spirit. And I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. And I will also sing with the understanding. So we are going to praise God. We are praising God in the spirit this morning. Hallelujah. You know when we pray in the spirit, we are speaking mysteries. And you do so very well. Hallelujah. Because it's the Holy Spirit that is praying out through you. So with this in mind, we are being thankful to God for what he has started. For his mighty hand that is upon us. For the new level that we have been released into. For those things, the new season of more and more, because we know that we are never decreasing, but we are always on the we are always increasing. Hallelujah! So we are going to pray in the in the spirit for a few minutes. Hallelujah! Maketeisa, rebrondo sutayaha, eladeisa talabando shale bredusa, lebrekele brendo sutaha. 
Ela desha tale brando sutonde dianda rabonda sutole bredusta. If there is anything that you have received from God in these past seven days, give thanks to Him in the Spirit. Give thanks to Him in the Spirit. Makete isataya. Ela brando shataha. Ela breke le brando sutole brando sutole braha. E braka baya kana shala banda zaha. Ela donda suta yeka nashala baha. Ela days at a lebanda shalebanda sotole bredusta. Rekele bondo sotole bredusta. Let him know how grateful you are. Makela da shaladada. Rabondo sotole brenda sotale baha. Abraka bayaka na sotonde. Le days at a yagada shaladada. Abranda shalabada bayagada. Abrando sotole brande. Ela dos at ilada. Abraka bayaga na shaladada. Rabraka bade. Rabondo sotole brenda sotole. Ila de shala da 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 da, la brakanda sota, abranda shala da 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 da, a de ya da da, e kalado, rebranda zonda shelere, e la de iza da, anda shala da 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 dia, la branda bayaga na shala da da, a brakete, e la de iza tale, e la de inda nosa, a bondo shala bondo, e la doza ta, a branda shala da da da, la gedere, e kalede, e la de iza ta, a branda shala de Enda zoto le banda shalerere Rakele bongada Abradeha Ela deizata Abrade shalare Gabondo zoto le brenda sekere Ela deizati ladada Abraka bayagana shalare Anda zoto Enda zoto le barierere Ela dei shalerere Rakele brenda zoto le banda Abranda shalerere Rebrando sutole bredusta, ela days ataha, abraka bayaka na sotole baria, ela dos atale bredusta, rebrando sotole bredusta. Thank you, Father, for the demonstration of the Spirit. Makela dos ataha. Thank you, Father, for signs and wonders. Mashale banda, ela days ataha, ela brando sutole bredusta. Thank you, Father, for those dimensions we have entered into. Makela dashalada, abrando sotole brede. Ela days at a lebanye, regala bonda shalada, abraka bayaka na soto, and the zonda shelere, regala brando soto legaria, abraka da shalada dia, abranda soto lega, ala de shalere, regala brando soto lebredia, abraka da zatala baria, abrando soto lebredia. Thank you, Father, for setting us apart to do great exploits. Mashale bande, regala days, ela doza tole braha. E kale banda shalere ela desa telebaria abraka baya gana shalaradia abraka nezoto ela doza tia abraka tasa ta abranda shale bara baya abraka nerere rebondo zoto le barie ela doza dia abranda sanye enda shale nerere ela bondo suta ya abranda shale bara baya agada sata abranda shalara abraka nerere ela dona ela Eza, ela do shelere, ela do zaniere, e kala brando suta le baha, a brando shelere, ela deha, e kala bonda ha, a brada shalada da, a brando suta le brediara, anda sataya, a brakete eza, a brando shelere dia, a kata sata la baya, a brando suta le dianda, na shale bara baya kana, anda suta le brenda, ela do zaniere. A brando sutole bredia, a prakadosa, a la branda shalabadabaha, a brando sutole gede, rebrando sutole bragada, a dei shalibaha, e la dozania, anda zanda daria, a prakabayagana shalada, a brando sutole bredia, a brando zigara, anda shalere, e kalebona, e la dei zania, anda sutaye kana shalada, a prakabayagana shalada, a prakada, anda zotole bradia. Barriere, rekele de, rekele bonda, a brando sotto le barriere, e la de shala baraba, a brando sotto le bredusta. It's a season to manifest, manda shala bara as the children of God. Makela de, e la donda ni anda sotto le ha, e la de shala baraba ha, a braka maya na na na, anda sotto le barriere, e la doza ni ya, anda shala baraba ya, a braka baya gana, a brando sotto le barriere. Ela donda di adada, anda zoto le bari edere, e kale de ishala badaba, abraga bayaga nasa, abranda shale bada. 
Rebondo Sutole Bredia, Ella Brenda Sutaya, A Branda Shaleba, A Kadada the Adada Sataha, A Brondo Sutole Branda Shelebede, E Kalede, Ella Deha, E Kalida Doroha, Anda Shalabada Baye, Anda Sutole Bredia, for expansion to the left, expansion to the right, A Branda Sutaha, Ella Deha Zatia, A Branda Shalabada, A Brondo Sutole Bredia, we are thankful for the people that we have become oh makebariara ela dozo tole bredusha being mindful of who we are in christ mashallah baya abronda suta ha ela brenda suta yekede ela deha ekanda bade bada ha andozo tole brediashta abronda suta ya enda zuto le bredia rakabaya kana shalara abronda zuto le bredia for the joy that we have experienced manda suta he ela dehe ela days that i have a brando shala badabaya, a brando shale de joy unspeakable. Oh, Makanda Nasha, e kala deha, enda zoto le badie, e bondo zoto le bredusha. We are grateful, oh God. Father, we are thankful, oh God. We give you all the praise, our God. We give you all the praise, our God. And the next ten seconds, and the next ten seconds, I want us to just give a shout of victory. Give a shout of victory. Our God is a good God. Oh, Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise. Come and say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. We give you all the praise, Jesus. Oh, Lord, my God. When I Consider the works thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy The universe displays. Then sings my soul, Master, your God.
and we'll shout our praise to you. The wonder working God, yes, we will lift our hands and we'll shout our praise to you. You're the wonder. Yes, we will lift our hands and we shout a praise. Yes, we shout a praise to you, Lord. You're the wonder-working God. Yes, we will lift our hands. We will lift our hands, oh Lord, and we will shout a praise. to church this morning and you're welcome to the final day of the awakening praise the lord hallelujah yes we can celebrate god that's a testimony we've made it all through to the end we have all together collectively a testimony and i'll prove that to you um if in second peter 1 19 peter speaking said you know this was after the transfiguration he said we have a sure word of testimony and in saying that you know he was saying the words the prophets said were confirmed by god himself and that was what made it a sure word through our awakening you will believe with me that we have received a sure word because the bible and prophecy has been confirmed again and you know scripture also said that we overcome by the words of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb we have the testimony the covenant was ratified by the blood of the lamb hallelujah and so i want you to celebrate because you have a testimony praise the lord all right we'll take the second testimony now please be blessed as you listen I want to testify of the goodness of God in my life. I traveled um, recently and um, by God's grace, uh, there were hiccups on the way, but God's favor saw me through. God's favor saw my friends and I through. Um, so I want to thank God for that. And secondly, um, I remember during the 21 day uh, praying and fasting in January that I was praying about a diagnosis that I got two years ago. That was a diagnosis that affected my life negatively. Um, apparently it started when I was a kid and I had no idea. And as I grew up as a teen, it, it became more um, prominent, like the effects of the diagnosis um, became more prominent and it, it made me feel held back. I was held back by it. It kind of like a spirit of, I felt captive uh, in my own body, in my own mind. Um, so during the 21 day uh, prayer and fasting, that was something that was in my heart that God, please read me off this. Please read me off this. It got so bad that um, I couldn't, I can't, func well, I couldn't function normally. Um, can be very forgetful, um, lack of motivation, um, just 
because things were just going bad in my life um so during the 21 day prayer that was those were one of my prayers that i was uh, that was trusting god for so recently um i started noticing that wait a minute i have more energy and my memory like i couldn't i couldn't memorize numbers like that i couldn't memorize numbers or someone would tell me something and then the next minute i have forgotten um so i want to thank god that you know like i it's really amazing it's really amazing i want to thank god for restoration because god has god has healed me god god has made me whole so i just want to thank god for that hallelujah we shouldn't take that for granted hallelujah we all have the blessings of a sound mind abba father we say thank you for blessing us with a sound mind just like you've done one of us again Receive all the praise, glory, and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please do well to also share your testimonies. And to do that, you can send it to the WhatsApp number of a church. It's 0809-467-9866. You can also share via email. And on Thursdays in the morning at 6 a.m., we take live testimonies on prayer blog. That is another avenue to share your testimony. Please take advantage of it. And God bless you as you do. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Can we be on our feet for the hymn? Now thank we all our God. Now thank we all. stop clapping don't stop clapping hallelujah 
Glory to God. Some of us sang the Yoruba version of this hymn so much. I was singing. <laughs> How many of us were singing the Yoruba version? <laughs> Glory to God. All right, let's pray. It's time to pray. Let me jab your neighbor. Say, it's time to pray. All right, Isaiah 25. We're going to take verses 6, 7, 8, and 9. The New King James Version. Can we have it on the screen? Isaiah 25 from verse 6. All right, let's read together. And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the lees. Verse 7. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Verse 8. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And the last verse. And it will be said in that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Can we just lift up our hands all over this place? How many of us believe that this has happened already in the course of this conference? Open your mouth and say, Father, we thank you for the Awakening Conference 2024. Can we just take a moment again to just bless the name of the Lord? Bless his name. Say, Father, we thank you for the Awakening Conference 2024. Hey, Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Because indeed, this has been our testimony. This has been our testimony. Father, we thank you. We bless you, our Father. We bless you, our Father. This is that mountain. And this is that day. Father, we bless you. Thank you for what you have done on this platform. Thank you for what you have done in the course of this conference. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless you for what you have done in the course of this conference already. We thank you for what you are doing right now and what you will yet do even after this conference. Father, we thank you for all the days. The one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six. And today is the last day of the conference. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now we're going to take two prayer points quickly from that portion that we read. The first, we're going to say, we rise from this week with our eyes clearly open, our vision strong, and our heart lifted. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. That Father, and pray that prayer for yourself. That in the name of Jesus Christ, we are leaving this meeting. We are leaving this meeting today. We are leaving here this week. We ramakata yalaraba with a clear vision, with a clearer sense of purpose, sense of direction. In the mighty name of Jesus, Mande Bakata Yagada, our eyes fully enlightened. We begin to see clearly. We begin to see from God's perspective. In the mighty name of Jesus, Hara Makata Yalagade, Engoroko Sota Yalaraba, Hara Makata Yalarabate. We live here inspired by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we are living here full of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that prayer for yourself. I will live here full of the power of God. I am living here full of the glory of God. I am living here fully inspired to dream again. In the name of Jesus, I am living here having rediscovered myself. Having rediscovered the deposit of God upon my life. In the name of Jesus, I am living here fully inspired by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus full of the inspiration of the holy spirit in the name of jesus no more confusion because every veil that has been cast over my eyes have been removed by the holy spirit in the name of jesus 
Therefore, I begin to see clearly in the name of Jesus. I see clearly in the name of Jesus. Every veil that the enemy has cast over my destiny, over my eyes, they've been removed by the hand of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that God's vision for my life is getting stronger. It's getting stronger. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And lastly, we're going to pray. Repeat after me, say, In the name of Jesus, say, We declare that in and among us are the evidence of God's glory as death, diseases, shame, and lack are destroyed forever. We go forward into the more of God as proofs of your glory. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. That in the name of Jesus in and among us in this room are the evidence of God's glory. In the name of Jesus. Say that over yourself. Say it over your marriage. Say it over your business. Say it over your finances. That in the name of Jesus, my finances will be the evidence of God's glory. My marriage will be the evidence of God's glory. My life will be the evidence of God's glory. This church will be the evidence of, all, of, of God's glory across all our centers in Pape, in Kubwa, in, in, in Guagalada, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Kapusa. We begin to produce results consistent with the glory of God that is on the inside of us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Businesses in this church will become the evidence of God's glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My health will be the evidence of God's glory. In the name of Jesus, God is glorified in my body. In the name of Jesus, no more death, no more death of ideas. Nindala karamakataya, hele mono romo kosota yala dabate, henga goro kosota yala dabate. No more dryness, no more dryness, no more scarcity. In the name of Jesus, hanga ta yala daba, he kete yele de boroko sota ya. Hey, our life after this conference will be the undeniable evidence. Hele moro moko sota ya, we become living proofs living proofs of God's glory in every ramification in the name of Jesus our career will be the evidence of God's glory in the name of Jesus marriages in this house will be the evidence of God's glory God's glory is revealed in our marriages in our homes in the name of Jesus in our churches in our finances in our ministry in the name of Jesus the glory of God finds eloquent expression in and among us in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we live here with the consciousness that we were created in the express image of God. We live here with that consciousness that we are the image of God and we are to reflect His glory everywhere we go in the name of Jesus. And from today, after this conference, we go about everywhere, giving expression to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Hele mano ramaka sata yagada ya. Hele mongo romoko sota yagada. He ye gedo roko sota yala raba. Hanga ramaka ta yala rabate. Hele koromoko sota ya. 
come and go ahead give him praise if you believe god has answered that go ahead and give him praise give him praise give him praise father we thank you we give you praise we worship your name thank you heavenly father for in jesus precious name we have prayed and as we have declared so shall it be in the mighty name of jesus and they just said a big amen can we celebrate jesus in the house to take us further in this service can we welcome the best choir on this side of heaven can we welcome them with a round of applause you may please be seated hallelujah come on if you're clapping for Jesus I believe you can do better God is good God is good the Lord is good tap your neighbor quickly say neighbor say neighbor there's a river flowing out of me are you sure are you sure Come on, after six days, you should know now. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise. Wherever you are, you can just raise your voice and just pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let your living water flow out of me. Let your Holy Spirit overshadows me as it was in the beginning so let it be now I am the city the city of God do you believe it let your living water flow out of me let your Holy Spirit overshadows me as it was in the beginning so let it be now I am the city the city of God Eden is no more a place I am the city of God I bring heaven, heaven here and now. It then is no more a place. I am the city of God. I bring heaven, heaven here and now. If you believe it, lift up your hands in worship. I bring heaven here and now. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, somebody pray the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, let your Holy Spirit overshadow me 
As it was in the beginning, so let it be now. Cause I am the city, the city of God. Let your living word flow out of me. Let your Holy Spirit overshadow me. As it was in the beginning, so let it be now. I am the city, the city of God. Lift your voice, if there is no more. I am the city of God. Yes, I bring heaven. Come on now. Can you raise a sound? Sing. If there is no more a place, I am the city of God. I bring heaven. Come on, it's a very simple song. You know it now. Every bottle sing. If there is no more. Lift up your worship wherever you are. Sing, if there is no more place, I am the city of God. I bring heaven here and now. Raise it up right now. Sing, if there is no more place, do you believe it? That you are the city of God. I bring heaven. Raise your worship right now. Somebody pray the Holy Ghost wherever you are. I am the city of God. And I bring heaven. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I am the city of the King of Glory. Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Can you live to worship right now? Everybody raise it up. Sing in there is the poor. I am the city of God. I bring heaven. Heaven here and now. You can sing it wherever you are. There's a river inside of me that is able to drown the war. I am the city of God. Can we raise it up right now? I am heaven. There's a river inside of me that is able to drown the war. Side of me that is able to drown the world. I am the city of God. I bring heaven. Do you bring heaven here? Yeah. And now, raise the voice and sing with me there. I am the city of God. One more time, lift it up. I bring heaven. There's a river inside of me.
am the city of God. I bring heaven, heaven here and very simple song. Can you raise your song wherever you are? Come on. Let him hear your voice this morning. Do you believe you are the city of God? Heaven hear it now. Just the voices now. Raise your voice and sing it now. Come on. I bring heaven. Sing it as though you know what you're saying and you believe it. Sing, Eden is no more a place. I am the city of God. I bring heaven. Can you lift your voice wherever you are? Eden is no more a place. I am the city of God. I bring heaven. One more time, which are lifting up your hands. He then is no more say, he then is no more a place. I am the city of God. I bring heaven, heaven here and now. Blessed be your name, Father. Thank you for the first day of this conference. Second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, the morning session, the evening session. Thank you for this final morning and final day. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirits. Thank you for the healings diverse testimonies blessed be your name forevermore in Jesus mighty name father we ask that you speak to our heart by your word this morning teach us by your Holy Spirit bring everyone to the place of wisdom and understanding and clear revelation in the three word sessions today in Jesus mighty name Praise God. Can you help me welcome someone this morning? Tell them good to see you in the house of God. I can't hear you. Tell them good to see you in the house of God. You may be seated. All right. The river within. The river within. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed a lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge because they rejected knowledge. And when knowledge is rejected, the enemy is empowered. When knowledge is accepted, the Spirit of God is empowered. The angels of God are empowered. Your human spirit is empowered. 
to get wisdom, get understanding. It's important that you acquire the right knowledge that you need for your life. When we don't know the things we need to know, we will be disadvantaged. The wisdom of God demands that we are people of knowledge and that we are men and women of understanding. And one of the things that we need to know and understand is knowing that we are spirit being and also understanding how to operate as spirit beings in this natural world. We live in a natural world governed by a different set of laws and the laws the laws of nature are different from the laws of the spirit that's what are called the laws of the spirit of life the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus if you if you want to operate fully as a god on this earth you must understand the laws of the spirit you must understand the you must understand the how to operate as a spirit being in this natural fallen world you must you live in a natural world but you must live spiritually natural or naturally spiritual, as the case may be. What you call a supernatural life. We must live a supernatural life. That is, we cannot just be natural. We must be supernatural. The supernatural life is a life that is an, it's living in this natural world, but engaging laws that are outside of the natural realm. Like Superman, for example, or Wolverine that we're talking about yesterday, they are X-Men. They are men, but with an extra factor driving their lives. When you introduce that X factor there, you become supernatural. We cannot afford to be mere men the kind of results that we should produce should suggest to those around us that we are not ordinary people. We are not ordinary people. We are, you are not an ordinary man. You are not a mere man. See, if you don't know who you are, that you are a God, and that you are a child of God, you will die like a mere man. You will, just, you will live your life like natural Everything about our life should not be normal. Even when normal things, are what, what people call normal, when they happen to you, you should change it. You should change it. So the wisdom of God places a demand on us to become knowledgeable and to become men and women of understanding. Understanding how to operate supernaturally in this natural world. We are not ordinary people. We are not mere men. We are sons of God. We are sons of God. In Genesis chapter 6, if you can give me Genesis chapter 6 verse 1. I was speaking, and it came to pass when, man, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that it, they were fair and they took them wives of all the which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man, for that is also flesh. Yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. 
Say there were giants in the earth in those days. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. The Bible says that the seed of the righteous shall be mighty on the earth. As sons of God, we, we must produce. The Bible says sons of God came into the daughters of men. When, when sons of God interact with natural things, extraordinary things must emerge on the face of the earth. They became, they, they started producing giants. When the sons of men, sons of God, started having intercourse with the daughters of men, when, when supernatural people start interacting with natural things, mighty things must emerge on the face of the earth. When Jesus started operating on the face of the earth as a son of God, when he came, he returned with power as the son of God and mighty works and mighty miracles started showing themselves through his lives. And everybody took note of him that it was not normal. There are results that you produce in your office, in your career, in your organization there, within your life, within your family, that people will say this one is not normal. We must build giant enterprises on the face of the earth. As a businessman, you must carry that supernatural factor there, inject it into aviation, inject it into education, inject it into sectors, and you begin to produce mighty things on the face of the earth. One of the things God told me is that we're going to have schools all over the world, and they'll be free. Primary, nursery, primary, secondary, university, free. In the next three, four years, I'll, the only scholarship that will be given is for gratis. I will not be supporting anybody to go to any school again. We're going to reduce it. If you're not in gratis school, I want to focus my energy on gratis school. Just gratis school. Primary, nursery. If we don't have gratis school in your community, we'll not give you support. I'm going to be withdrawing all the support. We're not adding new people to the system. We'll do a lot of educational work. But the vision that I have is to build universities. I, you know, I started thinking about the United Kingdom. And one of the things we even do for in the UK is to go and start a free school there. The government will ask you, what are you saying? Free. We'll be paying for the school from here. We have to repay them what they did to our own parents. They came to start school here free, so we have to go back there and set up Christian schools that will teach Christian values free. A giant enterprise. We have two free schools right now. One here has about 100 students. The other one 11. Combined. Free. People ask, how do you do it? We are supernatural people. Refuse to be ordinary. So much has been invested in you. So much has been invested inside your spirit. We are ordained of God to manifest the fullness of God bodily. We are to manifest the fullness of God bodily. Every area of your life must manifest the fullness of God. We are to manifest the fullness of God bodily every area of your life must show that you are connected to God that you are a child of God your business it must be evident in that business that you are doing it must be evident in your career that you are of God I 
And you cannot do this without being aware, without being conscious of your spiritual identity. I want to believe if you've been in this conference, by now you will, have begin, you, you will have begin to come into that awareness and consciousness of your spiritual identity. What, what God did with me last night when Pastor Amy David was teaching, he told me that for the past 10 years you've been praying the wrong prayers. You've been praying for multiplication. You are not supposed to pray for multiplication. The baby elephant does not need to pray to be big. The baby elephant does not need to pray. It's a waste of prayer point. The baby elephant does not need to wake up in the morning and say, God of heaven, I look to your face this morning. Let bigness come out of me. No, 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 no. It's, it, is, it, is, it is encoded inside the DNA of the baby elephant that it must be a mighty force on the face of the earth. You cannot be looking at a rat and be looking at itself and beginning to wonder, hey, hey, is this my hope? Is this my future? No, no, no. The elephant and the rat don't have the same DNA. There's no, they don't have the same DNA. The rat is the rat, the elephant, because it is not the, the the, the, you know, because you, there's a way you can you be looking at the wrong things and begin to conclude on who you are, and your identity get distorted. Amen. Was telling me this morning said, say multiplication is inside your spiritual DNA. Anything I put in your hand will multiply. Yeah. No wonder when they when they go to Egypt, Bible said they multiplied. In Exodus 1, let's look at it. Exodus 1. Give me Exodus, I think from verse 2 or 3. Quickly, give me Exodus 1. You are dead, you must, is that now in those, those um, okay, next verse. Reuben, Simon, yeah. Just go on, go on, go on. Next. Yep. And the children of Israel were fruitful. No, let's read, let's go up. Let's read from how many of them entered Egypt. So now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, just 70 of them. For Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died. And all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Seventy people entered Egypt. More than three million came out. Three million. Even the Egyptian became afraid of them, thinking that if these people arise and turn against, they can even take our land. They never prayed to be increased. It was inside their DNA. That consciousness there of your spiritual identity is very crucial and very, very important. Your identity and your spiritual heritage. You must be conscious of your identity and your spiritual heritage. Your heritage are the things that you inherited by the reason of the new birth. The resources that have been given to you by the reason of the new birth. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. I want you to leave this conference. Be mindful of this. Say ye are of God. You belong to God little children. And have overcome them because greater is he that is in you 
than he that is in the world. So you might be a little child, but you belong to God. A little child that belongs to God is stronger and greater than anything in the world. Year of God, little children, and you have overcome the devil because you are not only of God, that same God lives on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in you than he that he is in the world. That is, in this world, you must live consciously of the one that lives on the inside of you. If you don't live in that consciousness, you cannot overcome. You will be overcome. The overcomer's mindset, the dominion mindset, is to live in the consciousness of who you are in God and the fact that that same God is on the inside of you. You are not only in him, he's also in you. You must live in that consciousness of the one that lives in us. We must live in the consciousness of the power that is available in us. That has been installed on our inside. The spiritual resources. The spiritual infrastructures. That are available to us. That have been erected around us. The angels that are for us. Living in that consciousness is key. Living in that consciousness is very crucial. Let me give you four things quickly. Number one. In the song that the choir did, first thing is that you are the city of God. You are the city of God. You are the city of God. When God designed you in the beginning, when God created man, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an equation here. Let's start out first in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Proverbs 25, 28. Read first, let's read four scriptures quickly. Proverbs 25, 28. Proverbs 16.32, John 14.28 in the easy to read version, then Acts 17.28. Proverbs 25.28, Proverbs 16.32, John 14.23 in the easy to read version, then Acts 17.28. You are the city of God. In Proverbs 25, 28, it said, He that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So the Bible says that your spirit, when you take charge of your spirit, when you rule your spirit, when you become aware of the resources that are on the inside of you, you are, a well, you are a walled city. You are a protected city. So your city is either protected or not protected. So your spirit man is a spiritual city. Your spirit is a city. And we all know the story of the madman of Gadara. That 5,000 demons, legions of demons living comfortably inside him. Our facility can sit about 1,500. Imagine 5,000, an auditorium that can sit 5,000. Like almost four times this. 
then not just to see it, but for, for people to live, for 5,000 people to live comfortably in a, in a, in a city, you, you, can't, you, can't just, you can't be living on a chair. You know this one, you are sitting on one chair. The space you are occupying is not too much. But if, want, if, if I want to accommodate a thousand people, you, have, you need more space. Even if you want to put two per room, you need a very good ample space to accommodate two people in a room. Now try to picture when you were in the university and you were in your hostel. As big as your hostel is, maybe only 300 of you living there. Now, now imagine 5,000 demons that love space living inside one man and they, they didn't want to leave because it was very comfortable. Because when God built the spirit of man in Genesis 1, he created it for himself. For your spirit is God's place of habitation. It was designed to accommodate God. So when God didn't move in, Satan moved in. That's why people are demon possessed. Demon possession and demon, all those demonic invasion there is because there is a city inside. He said, when you cast out a demon from a man, you'll be looking for where to rest. He will now go and invite seven other demons than it. If he finds the place empty, you want to invite someone over there and say, Come, let's go back to my home. I said, there are accommodation inside your spirit. You are the city of God. Tell anybody you are the city of God. In Proverbs 16, 32, it says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Still, the city is still there. When you rule your spirit, you don't need to go and take another city. You already have one. It's better for you to safeguard your, your own spirit than to be fighting for another city because there is more inside your spirit than any city you can take else on the outside. That's what the Bible is saying. It's a massive spiritual real estate. Your spirit man is a massive spiritual real estate with real spiritual infrastructures installed on your inside. Living quarters. Your spirit man was designed and fashioned by God to carry him, to, for him to live in you. John chapter 14, verse 28. Please, can you put on this light? John 14, 28. 23, sorry. John 14, 23. Jesus answered, All who love me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. My father and I will come to them and live with them. All who love me will obey my teaching. My father will love them. My father and I will come to them and live in them. That's why I say greater is he that is in you. He lives in us, we also live in him. Everybody lives inside God. He's our hiding place. He's, he's, he's our high tower. He's our dwelling place. We live in God, every one of us. Whether you are aware of it or not, you live in him. And the same way you live in him, 
He must also live in you. He also lives in you. Once you obey him, once you have accepted Jesus, God is living on the inside of you. The way you live on the inside of him. And when I was trying to understand this concept, the least reason I showed me that look, it's like hair. For you to stay alive, for you to be alive, you must be enveloped in hair. And you must have air on your inside. If you are enveloped in air and they don't want air to go into the choking you, you die. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. You can't live inside a vacuum. You are living, whether you, you, you might not see it, but you are, in, you are surrounded by oxygen. When you enter a room, you want to make sure that it's well ventilated. If there is no window, there must be air conditioners bringing in the air. Because you have to be surrounded by air and you must be taking air inside of you. You must live in air and air must live in you for you to be alive. The same to you in the realm of the spirit. You must live in him. Then he must also live in you. Act. Are you still there? Yes. Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. Greater is he that lives in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But we also live in him. It is that connection that brings power. We live in him, he lives in us. So you are the city of God. So number two. We established there that you are the city of God. God designed your spirit man as the place of his own private habitation. So the number two, the spirit within now. So Eden is now within. Eden is now within. The city of God, the garden of God, the garden of faith is now within you. Because don't forget that when God planted a garden in Eden, he, created, he planted a place of communion, a place of fellowship, a place where we come in the cool of the evening to fellowship with man. Now that place of fellowship is inside your human spirit. So the spirit within is like the garden of Eden. God planted a garden in Eden. Sin came. Terminated that project. Then God now transferred that project now into the spirit of a man. He said, now we're not going to build a physical garden anymore. We're going to now build a garden inside the man. So everything that we did in the paradise that was on the earth, we're going to now transplant all of that and put it inside the man. So everything that we lost in Adam have been restored in Christ Jesus. Everything we lost in Adam have been restored in Christ Jesus. And one of the things about Eden is that when God planted a garden in the east of Eden, he, he put a river inside that garden. And that river parted into four heads. And Jesus said, anyone that believes and drinks of the water that I give, that water will become in him a fountain of living waters. A fountain that will, that will turn to rivers. God planted one, put a, a river, a sprang, he planted a river there in Eden and that became four rivers. The same thing too, he has put, he has transplanted Eden within. He has now, he has now planted that river within. And that river will sp split into many rivers. 
Some scholars think that maybe four rivers flow within a man. I think there are more than four. Garden of Eden had four. But you cannot count the number of rivers that can come out of one man. So if Eden had a river, then, then your spirit also has a river. Then your spirit is now the Eden that is within and, and the thing with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the river that started gushing out of Eden, the four rivers, Pison, Gion, and all of those, um, and Euphrates, and the four rivers that came out of Eden, they, they were the four rivers that went out of the garden of God to water the four corners of the earth. From that point, the water started gushing to the four corners of the earth. And what that tells us is that now that the water is within our spirit, God expects us to carry that spirit. You know, Jesus said, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. You shall be my witnesses there in, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. That river that is within you is that you are to carry that waters to the ends of the earth. It is not just a local river out there. It's a river that must flow to the four corners of the earth. It's beginning to cause things to spring from your inside. You must think global. You must be global in your outlook. That this thing that is gushing out of my spirit is not just for my environment alone. I, I, would, I, must, I must act local, but I must go global. From Abuja, to Kaduna, to Kano, to Nijay, to all the way to New York, to Bangalore, all the way to Brazil. It is flowing from inside me. Even if it's a restaurant you are running, you can start one in New York. KFC is not a Nigerian company. McDonald's is not a Nigerian company. That dominion that he put on the inside of us is for us to dominate the earth, to, to have dominion. You must allow that river to flow from the inside of you. Dominating your environment, conquering everything around you there. When you allow that river to flow, it will lead you to the place of prosperity. The first river that came out of the river, Pison. Yeah, River Pison. Yeah. You are wise to be in this church. Because River Pison will bring out the gold in you. Yeah. My friend Arume didn't know why we were shouting peace on, peace on, peace on. <laughs> Number three, the river within you there. So the, now the first thing I say, you are the city of God. And secondly, inside the city of God, rivers must move. And the river within you is for the nations. That's the third thing I want you to understand this morning. The river within you, the rivers within you, they are for the good of the nations. By your river, you will bring prosperity to men. By your river, you bring fruitfulness to men. By your river, you bring productivity to men. You know, I was telling you guys, I think yesterday also, that look, when the, when the, first, the first source of electricity was um, hydropower. Rivers power dynamos that generate light. Because you are around, you must build systems that will bring light to men. That will bring energy to people. 
that will bring clarity to people. People can plug to you and they will leave. One of, the, one, of, one, of, one of my daughters in church was telling me yesterday how that her, her sister had had all manner of healings because she is connected to this church. All manner of healings. She was counting them, all manner, high problem healed, all manner of healings. They said one of, the, one of the women in this church who joined this church she came into this family with seven terminal diseases, seven critical diseases, seven. One of those things and killed. One after the other, they were knocked off. One after the other, knocked off. Nobody laid hands on her. She just came and took communion. And the power of God entered her body and the sicknesses. PCOS have been embarrassed in this church. PCOS. We say PCOS. Say you can't, PCOS, you can't have babies. Not in this church. There's so much power in this place that will terminate every devil walking in the blood. That's what you do when the river starts flowing inside you there. It is for the good of men. The manifestation of the spirit is to profit without. It's for the profiting of the people around you. Nations should be glad that you were born. The river within there will give divine direction. We give vitality. We we'll, we'll bring wisdom and strength. It's the river of joy that makes glad the city of God. In, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. When people connect with you, they connect with strength, with vitality, with peace. When people experience you, they should experience refreshing. And Bible is speaking about that river there. It said that the river will be going to produce the tree of life. And that tree of life, the leaves of that tree, is for the healing of the nations. The river was given to you for the betterment of your world. It must flow from inside you first to your immediate environment. It must show in the things that you do. It must show in the works of your hands. Begin to flow into the lives of your children, flow into the life of your wife, your parents, your siblings, your friends. Begin to flow to the nations of the world. Revelation 22, verse 1 to 3. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it on either side of the river was there the tree of life, with which beareth twelve man of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve it. In the city of God there is the river of life that, that gushes out of the throne of God. That is, God is enthroned inside your life. When God is enthroned, the water begins to flow, and that water begins to flow. Trees of life begin to grow through you. Your words carry life. When you speak over people healing. A young guy walked up to me, I think last Sunday, he said, he said, I've been here, I've been coming out for two weeks. He said, and once, anytime I hear you speak and you tell your stories, he said, there are, there are certain things inside me that get healed just hearing your words. Your, your word must carry life. Because that water that flows there, they manifest through your tongue. And finally, number four, you must stay in fellowship. Because the thing with rivers is that rivers have sources. Rivers are not self-sufficient. I 
I know Pastor Rex was telling us that the thing gushes. 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 That gush is the source. The source is God. I know you drank and the water started flowing inside you. Uh, you can't disconnect from God. It is not a self-sufficient and a self-sustaining river based on your own spirit. Your spirit has become one with the spirit. So in the eyes of God, your spirit is not disconnected from the Holy Ghost. Although it is your spirit they see, but that spirit is, is rooted, is connected. The way God designed us, uh, we are like moon. We don't have light of our own. We are branches. We don't have life without the stem and the root that bears us. Are you getting me there? If the branch disconnects from the stem, it dies. They say the river, the river that forgets its source will run dry. You know, one of the prophecies in, the old, you know, in Genesis, they showed us Euphrates. In Revelation, they now showed us that Euphrates ran dry. One of the signs of the second coming of Jesus is that the Euphrates will run dry. You cannot disconnect from fellowship. You must stay connected. By staying connected, the river will remain fresh. Don't build a dam on your river. Don't disconnect yourself from God. We must stay in fellowship. We must stay connected to the source. God is not a source. God is the source. The river that disconnects from its source will run dry. When Adam lost, when Adam disconnected from fellowship, he lost his garden. We must stay in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. We must remain permanently connected to the Holy Spirit for that water to remain permanently gushing on the inside. Never you begin to delude yourself and begin to think that you are now a source. You are not a source, you are a channel. That river flowing on the inside of you can only be sustained by staying connected to God in fellowship. Fellowship in the word and praying in the Holy Ghost. There's something you'll have seen about Pastor Rex. There's no time he would teach, I will not tell you to declare the word of God. You must put the word inside you and as you begin to declare that thing, you begin to prime that water there. It begins to flow. You must stay in the word, stay in prayer. Stay in fellowship. You come to church. Don't, dis, don't stay away from fellowshipping with other Christians. Don't stay away from praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't stay away from putting the word of God inside you there. Fellowship with the word. Fellowship with the spirit. Fellowshipping with other Christians there. Keeps that water fresh. and keeps the water flowing. And one of the number one target of Satan is fellowship. He knows that if he can disconnect you from fellowship, he can quench your fire. And that was why he, he targeted the fellowship of Adam and his wife Eve. And they got disconnected from their source. I want you to stand to your feet and just pray this morning. I'd like to hear your voice. Talk to God, our Father, in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Let your hand be strong upon me. Let your mighty hand be strong upon me. Help me to stay connected to you. Help me to stay in fellowship. Help me to stay in fellowship and in communion with you. 
Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. The honor of God rest upon us all. In Jesus' precious name. You may be seated. I know some of us have not been coming for the conference. This is a special service. It's a combined service. So there's no, this is a combined service. So we'll continue the service. And we have three word sessions this morning. You just add the first one. Pastor Rex is already here. Um, and Pastor Amy Davis will be joining us shortly. Neon, I think Neon is, is around already. All right, so to take us further in this service, let's receive the ministry of Chooks. Can we give him the mic, please? God bless you. some praise. Give God some praise. Is that the best you can do? 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 Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I expect somebody to be running around now. Shate Prade Kofaradiya. Sabara de Batana Mafrodi Shade Bahaya. Father to child, from your spirit to my spirit, enlightened by your word. And with your breath of life. Come on, sing a church, sing a church, come on. Sing it again. Yes, Father, to child. That's how I come. That's how I change my world. Everybody, can you sing it again? Yes, Father, to child. To spirit. spirit I am light by your word. Ah, and with your bread of life, with your bread of life. That's, how I come alive. that's how I come alive. That's how I change my that's space. How I change my world. Yeah, that's fine to shine. That's how I change, That's my, how I change my world. Can you lift your hands like a funnel and sing? Just breathe your name. Shaba, just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Lift your hands to heaven this morning. Your hair will hear. Somebody, my just read your name From the depth inside of you Just read your name Just read your name upon me Just read your name Your head That's your Father to child, Father to child, yeah. Spirit to spirit, I am light. By your word. From Abba straight to you, and with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Yeah, the 
Let's find it to child. And with your bread of life, that's how I come alive. Come alive. That's how I change my that's world. I change my All world. of her in this room, just lift your hands, just breathe. Shaba, just breathe your own Right now, you're 
walls are crumbling down Chains are falling down uh, Walls are crumbling down Summer. Chains are falling down At the sound of my voice Yes I win, I know I win I win by shouting in the Holy Ghost Somebody should be shouting right now seven days on the first day I can tell you that some people were complaining by the second day okay let's go by the fifth day by the seventh day everybody was in agreement and when they walked around the world do you know what happened there they hit the right frequency and it created the presence of God around the world because in the presence of God there is fullness of joy in the presence of God there are no limitations and that wall was a limitation so it had to come down are you gonna shout or not are you gonna scream or not somebody raise your shout raise your shout all of you is moving raise your shout 
change. Sorry, this morning. <laughs> Somebody say this morning. Something must change. Something must shift. As the music is going up, I'm gonna let you shout. Are you ready? Are you ready to hit that frequency? Are you ready to create his presence? Rabadana Makosia. I'm gonna count to four. Are you ready, somebody? One, two, one, two, three, four, go. Somebody scream. Somebody scream. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. You gonna win when you shout. <laughs> you gonna win when you shout. 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 the name of the Lord you may be seated glory be to God our lives will not remain the same again I said our lives will not remain the same again praise the name of the Lord it's been um, a great one week God indeed has been faithful and and he's not done with us yet we still have two more two more word sessions to go as we close this conference 
I want to encourage you to lay hold of all the messages by all the ministers since we started a conference on Monday and, and feed on them, listen to them. I want you to go back to it again, listen to them over and over again. And it's not over. And those of you who came for the first time this morning, the mercy of God will catch up with you. Amen. And the same way God, in his mercy, delivered the same value to everyone that came, those that said in the morning and those that said in the, that came just a few hours to work. It is my prayer that God will catch up with you this morning and will cause factors to align for you. And if you need a miracle in your body, in your finances, you will get it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to receive the first, word, the first, the second word session this morning. And we are honored to have someone whose ministry I honor and respect. From the very first day in 2001, when I sat under him very briefly, very briefly, one evening in a room without light. There was no light there, no microphone, no, no LED screen, just a few of us, 15 or so, were just seated and was teaching the word of faith. And that was the first time I would even hear that, 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 the teaching of the word of God in that light. And a permanent mark was made in my spirit from that short exhortation that evening around September of 2001. And I'm not surprised at how God has lifted him, granting him eloquence and amplifying his voice. And that is why anytime he's in a country we take advantage to have him come to be a blessing to us. And it's with honor and great joy in my heart I wanted to stand this morning as we receive one of the finest teachers of the word of faith, <laughs> Pastor Larry Rex on North Side. Well, thank you, Lord. It's been a great week, right? Yeah. It's been a great week, and the fruit of it would, you know, keep blossoming. Amen. Amen. It's been an amazing week. So much um, has been shared, and, you know, will still be received. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Peace on Peace Jacks. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Two sessions, you know. You know, and, um, and I believe that, like, like Peace on said, which I'm sure someone in the teaching, I'll reiterate that again. Go over the teachings, please. All right, so much has been deposited, so much will keep being deposited. Um, let it not just be said that you go to Holy Hill Church, let it be seen that you go to Holy Hill. Do you understand that? Let it not just be said. The Bible said they took note of them that, ah, they've been with Jesus. All right, let it be seen. Let it be evident. Let people wonder, you're different from us. Ah, uh, you go to the, ah, uh, we see. All right? So it's not just something to say. It's something to be made known. Is that okay? So it's, it's wonderful. So I appreciate the privilege given to us to be here, to be a blessing. We do not take it for granted. And I appreciate um, having to... Minister Pastor Yemi is here. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. We had a great night yesterday, didn't we? Yes. Woo, it was good. It was good. It was covenant explained with accuracy, all right? Pers perspicuity, right? That's the word, I think, yeah. You know, very phew, like that. So praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
You only lift your hands and just give God thanks. It's been a great week. Father, thank you. It's been a great week. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for renewals. We thank you for healings. We thank you for enlargement. We thank you for the things that have taken place. Thank you for the many more overflowing impact of this great conference. We give you praise for it. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the ever-increasing impact, ever-increasing testimonies that will keep streaming from this. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So John chapter 4. Hallelujah. I said yesterday that the conversation Jesus had with the woman in John 4 is one of my finest conversations. And it's because of the simplicity yet the depth of what Jesus was discussing with her. And it begins with water. And like I said yesterday, I'm riding on existing revelations that have been shared here already that the water is the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? All right, so we'll not go too much into that so that we could get further into some other things. So just begins to talk to her about water. Give me water. She says, hey, you know, why, why are you asking me and all of that? And I love something Jesus said. <laughs> you know, if, if, if I let's see verse 10, first of all, of that John 4, John 4, 10, it's just, you know, an interesting conversation. So John chapter 4, verse 10, of course, the woman said, you don't have a fetcher and all of that. And Jesus answered and said to her, if only you know the gift of God and the person that is talking to you, you would have asked him and he would give you. What would he give you? So there's another kind of water. Okay, then we get to the 14th verse now. Verse 14. All right, Jesus, and it, it's exciting. Just follow this. Jesus said, all right, whoever drinks of the water that I will give. All right? So, the, 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 I'll, I'll show you that name. Let's, let's see it. Verse, verse 14, please. Thank you. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give would never thirst. But the water that I will give him, what will happen to it? Will become in him. And I want you to notice the beauty of the conversation there. I give you water to drink. And the water I give you to drink becomes something inside you. And I want you to understand the beauty of this revelation. It's so simple so beautiful when i give you water to drink when you're thirsty won't you come back for water because i gave you water you always come back for water jesus said no when i give you water it produces a well inside you let's see the verse again <laughs> it's so so you're like ah oh, jesus you said a lot in one statement Whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst again. Because the water that I will give him will be where? In him, a well of water or a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. So I'm going to read the last part, then we'll read the first part. Are you ready for this? Stay with me and let's get this. But the water that I will give him will become what? In him, a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Therefore, I'm going to the beginning now. I'm going to do something you need to follow to see it. I'm reading the second part to go back to the first part because I believe you'll get it. But the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Therefore, back to the beginning of the verse, anyone that drinks this water that I give him will never thirst again. I'll do it one more time. <laughs> if you get it today, if not, you'll get it. When you listen again. Can you see the verse? Are you sure you're looking at the verse? What did Jesus say will happen to anyone that drinks this water? Why would the person never thirst again? So I'll do it again. Then I'll do an illustration. But the water that I give him will be in him a fountain of water springing up to where? 
Therefore, I'm going to the beginning now. Anyone who drinks the water that I give him will never what? Why? I gave you water to drink. The water I gave you to drink became inside you. So would you come back to me to drink? Why? I put something in you from the one you drank. And the one I put in you started bubbling continuously. So rather than you becoming thirsty, something in you is quenching your thirst. Is that what he said? But once again, what he said is different from what we experience. So it's either he's right or we are right. It's either he's lying or we are correct. Lord, I'm thirsty. He said you will never. Why? Because the thing I give you will become something inside of you. All right? And you need to listen to all the teachings and put everything together. This morning, peace was talking about the Holy Spirit in you and your source because that's what it is. TPT of this verse, please. We just milk it a little and then we'll run. Oh, this is so good. Are you ready for this? But if anyone drinks the living water I give them, they will never what? Thirst again and will be forever what? Jesus is quoting his psalm here. We'll see. They will forever be satisfied because when you drink the water I give you, it becomes what? A gushing fountain of who? Who is the water? Does Holy Spirit have start and stop? We are the ones that start and stop. We are the ones that are in the mood or not in the mood. We are the ones that feel like praying or not feel like praying. He is ever willing. Ever ready. So the fountain in you is the Holy Ghost. Because he is the water. He is the one gushing out of you. Watch this. Now, when I said yesterday, the, the point is this. The church has to understand that man is spirit, soul, and body. So the reality of this is in your spirit. Whether you experience it or not is now how well your soul relates with the revelation. Please understand this. And that's why the Bible says, in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. That's the functioning of the soul catching a revelation. Paul prays that the eyes of your understanding <laughs> will be enlightened because there are realities in your spirit, things that have already been done that you might never experience. So a Christian is going through hardship. Is the Holy Spirit in that person or not? So what happened? You are not drawing from the reality of the person in you. So question is, is the Holy Spirit there? One of the biggest prayers in the body of Christ is, oh God, help me. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. But you know the name of the Holy Spirit is helper. Where does he stay? Do you know how helpless we feel every day? Do you know how helpless we feel every time? Do you know his name? All right? You're a father, you stand beside your son, and your son is looking out for another father. How would you feel? I just wish I have a father. I wish I have someone that is responsible. And you're standing right there. How do you feel? Do you know his name? Helper. He's assigned to help you. He is committed to help you. All his resources are available for help. And sometimes you get on phone just so that someone can feel pity for you. You start just abusing God. Unconsciously, though. I'm just so helpless right now. My life is so frustrated. And the rest of me standing there and like, oh, yeah. Okay. In fact, there's nobody. Nobody around me. Nobody to help me. Nobody. <sighs> and he's standing right there. And I'm just insulting him. And I understand because we feel frustrated. But it's because we've not come to a revelation of who he is. Jesus said, I need to go so that he can come. Now he has come. We treat him like he doesn't exist. Do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you know the person we have received? The Bible says he is the fountain in you. That fountain consistently is gushing. Whether we now allow it gushing to us or not. And by us, I mean your body, your mind, your circumstances. But it's always there. Psalm 36 verse 8. Psalm 36 verse 8. 
Psalm 36 and verse 8. Watch this now. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. You give them drink from where? Jesus was saying when you drink this thing, you will never what? He's referring to this. Because when they drink, they are abundantly what now? Satisfied. How am I sure this is what Jesus is saying? Look at the next verse. What does he say here? For you, with you is what? He said in John, when you drink the water, what happens inside you? He was quoting from here. When you drink, you are forever satisfied. Why? The satisfact... How do we say it in English? So I don't say the wrong thing. The satisfactor. Satisfier. The Holy Spirit carries the fullness of God. The Holy Spirit is God. God gave you himself. Having received him, we feel like we don't have anything. I don't even have anybody. Do you understand who you have? Do you understand who you have? Do you know how many Christians feel helpless every day? Helper is in us. How many people fall ill every day? Healer is in us. How many people are confused every day? Counselor is in us. Do you understand who you have? He is the satisfier. And Jesus said, when you drink, I give you him in a full dose. He becomes in you an unending stream, a gushing fountain. He is. NLT, that verse, um, that's um, 36 verse 9, because many translations use for which you is. I like the way NLT puts it. How did he call it? You are the fountain. So Jesus said, when you drink, inside you will appear a fountain. Who shows up inside you? Holy Spirit. Who is he? Fountain. Is the Holy Spirit is he in you? Constantly? Permanently? So there's a fountain in you. Constantly. Permanently. What then do you do? You allow there to be a flow. In Genesis chapter 26, we're told about Isaac, Abraham's son, and how that Isaac, you know, prospered, exceedingly prospered and all of that. One thing Isaac now embarked upon was to dig certain wells. Verse 18 of Genesis 26, verse 18. So uh, Isaac, and watch this. And he reopened, it's okay, fine, it's, it's fine. All right. <laughs> And Isaac dug again the wells of the waters which had been dug in the days of who? Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. <laughs> and he called the names of, and he called them by the names which his father called them. So Isaac went to dig Abraham's well. And I want to bring out something here that I learned sometime. It's been a blessing. It will bless you. Have you heard a lot of revelations this week? Sometimes certain revelations, as you hear them, they impact you immediately. As you're listening, you're transformed. Peace was talking about the fact that some people, by virtue of just being here, healings are happening in their lives. Do you understand that? Now, there are certain revelations that when you get them, you still have to go and own them. Some work for you. In fact, many of them work. There's an impartation. Jesus said, you are made clean by the words I speak to you. So as they are listening, there's a renewal, a refreshing, but there's an ownership of the word. So Abraham dug wells. Now Isaac went to redig wells that Abraham dug. So that's like starting off from someone's revelation. But there will be contention. All right? You might start with peace on set. Peace on set. And that's three people share testimony. But you, you felt like, but when I tried to do it, it didn't work for me. That's contention. Something coming to dissuade you, distract you from consistently applying that revelation. You don't give up. You keep going. Because you have to work it till you own it. Kenne Copeland picks revelations from Kenne Hagen. Teaches the same thing. But he wasn't teaching Hagen as much as it sounded like Hagen. He was owning it. That's why after why Copeland became a name. It wasn't just echoing Hagen, it became Copeland. Mm -hmm. They might have said the same thing the same way, but the other person that copied the first person did not copy, but like Parrot, he owned it. 
Jezebel shows up, quoting Kenneth Copeland verbatim, or verbatim. But he's not quoting like parrots. He locked himself for three months in a room. Came out. He owned it. If I one of those times said things were not working, and those days wasn't case said, there's something called real to real. They are round like that. He said it was so mad, he tricked down the road. God, this thing is not working. God said, your answers are rolling down the road. He said he had to run after those real to real, pack them again, go back inside and go and keep listening. You need to own it. You have to own this thing. So much has been shared this week. Don't just shout, hey. Remember, Jesus talked about the parable of the sower. There are those that heard the word, and Satan came to take it away. If you read Mark, Satan took it away. If you read Matthew, the reason why Satan could take it away was because they lacked understanding. Satan cannot just come and take anything away. He doesn't have that power. Because they didn't have understanding, it was taken away. Second category, they were on stony ground. And the word did not produce because there was no depth. Third ground among thorns, they were choked because of distractions. So these things always come to affect productivity. So after hearing solid word, great speakers, you have to go and own it. You have to dig wells. And like Pistons said earlier, when you listen and listen, some of the ones that hit at you again, how many of you were blessed with the Revelation Covenant last night? And then Pistons came up and said, ah, Multiplication. Nyafu, nyafu. All right? Because now we see it. Blessing. Go and own it. I, mean, I don't know if that's happened to you sometimes. You catch a revelation healing, and two days later, one very horrible symptom now shows up. It's something to make you give up because it knows you're about to hit a gusher. And many Christians at that point give up. When he starts saying, I have abundance in Jesus' name, it's as if money now packs his load and leaves your domain. What's he trying to do? Confront you. Like it's not going to work. He knows you're about to hit something. So he tries to dissuade you. What do you keep doing? Let's keep reading on Isaac. You dig, you dig your wells. So Isaac dug, and then called them named Abraham. Call them next verse, please. And Isaac seven dug in the valley and found a well of water. All right, <laughs> running water. Let's keep going. <laughs> but the herdsmen of Gerar, what did they do? Quarreled with Isaac seven, saying the water belongs to us. So he called the name of the place, you know, Essek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled with him over that one also. And he called the name of the place Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called the name of the place Rehoboth. Oh, God has given us much room. But before Rehoboth, he kept on digging. And as he dug, they would quarrel with him. As he dug, they would quarrel with him. He had to keep digging till there was ownership. Dig your well. Dig your well. So that it gets to a point, it's not just peace on set, it's I know. Oh, I know. You can't beat this thing out of me. I know it works. And that it works, eh, is not when you see the result. There are tangibles and then there are intangibles. Kenny Copeland said he was reading one day and he just carried his Bible and ran to his wife. Gloria, Gloria, we're rich, we're rich. And he just walked up to her. You would have thought he was carrying a bag of money, he was holding his Bible. He said, Gloria, we're rich. If you know how broke these people were, they didn't have cooking pots in their house. They were cooking food from a coffee cup. Coffee pot. Small pot of that used to boil coffee was how they were using to cook food. That's how broke they were. All right? When they wanted to partner our robots ministry, Copeland said, we're going to partner our robots now with $10 a month. $10. Gloria said, where will we find $10? That's how broke they were. So you are better off from where they started. So if you own it now, you, you will travel. So he ran to her, we're rich, we're rich, we're rich. She said, where, where, how, how? And he showed her, Christ has redeemed us so that the blessing of Abraham will come on the Gentiles. This is it, this is it. Don't say, is that money? 
When you have light, you have everything. Yes. Revelation. So that's why Bishop Wedipo will tell you. He locked himself in a room with a Kenneth Copeland book, a Gloria Copeland book with his Bible, locked himself for three days, came out. And the first words out of his mouth, I can never be poor. He said, where's the money? No, intangibles. The intangibles produce the tangibles. Many times we chase the tangibles. You want to look good, borrow cloth, borrow headgear, borrow shoe, borrow tie. While you're busy borrowing it, make sure something's growing on your inside. Dig your well. Dig your well, dig your well, dig your well. So it won't just be they said, it won't be they told me. It won't be so when next you come for this conference next year, you are coming to pick more nudgets, more, more equipment to go and dig some more. So you won't just be saying, ah, these ministers are coming. It's I am becoming something. You dig. You dig. And a major way to dig. I'm so excited about saying we'll be talking about being led by the Spirit. Because in between, I have it, and here it is. You have to be led. Yeah? So I'll focus a bit more on meditation. You dig. God told Joshua, this book of law will not depart out of your mouth. You will meditate in it day and night. So that you may observe to do. <laughs> it sounds funny, God. Moses just died. You say meditate. Because yes. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy who took over after Moses. A pastor that can open Red Sea. A pastor that can call food from the sky. A pastor that can bring water out of the rock. I want to take over a church from that kind of person. God says, yeah, the key is what? Be confident and stay on the word. Look at that verse. All right, this book of law, not part of your mouth, Joshua 1 8. You will meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do, right? According to all that is written therein, look at the last place there. Are you ready? For then God will make your way prosperous. Is that what he said? Some of you are not looking at it, you know that. <laughs> Who will make your way prosperous? Who will make your way prosperous? So when they tell you it can't be done, meditation says, I can do it. When they say it's impossible, meditation says, nah, that's where we come to work. We'll make our way. Who is talking? God. Talking to Joshua, and he said, when you spend time meditating, you will make your way. David learned the same thing. So Psalm 1, David said, blessed is the man that walks on the counsel of God. Psalm 1, verse 1. Nor stands in the world of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. <laughs> verse 2 says, he delights in the word. And in that word, he will meditate out often again. Day and night, he will be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water, he will bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaves will never wither. Anything he does. Hmm. David said, I found something. What? Meditate. And if you read through the Psalms, you see that David gave attention to praise, to prayer, to giving, to loving, to meditation. David gave attention. He would say, I meditated on your word through the night. I, laid on my, I lay on my bed meditating on your word. Every verse in Psalm 119 has something to do with the word of God. Every verse. What I call the precepts, counsel, law, commandment, whatever thing he called it, it was the word of God. Every single verse in Psalm 119. David paid attention to God's word. Someone that was a king, that was a warrior, that was all of that, paid attention to God, paid attention to worship, paid attention to hearing from God. You can't be as busy as David. Because sometimes you think you're too busy. You can't be as busy as Joshua. You can't, you have by our projects. Have you tried conquering Jericho before? Have you led over a million people before? These men did it, and God told them, meditate. Genesis 24. Because meditation didn't just begin with Joshua. Genesis 24, verse 63. Genesis 24, 63. So, so interesting a verse. They had sent, you know, Abraham had sent his servant to go bring his wife. I mean, to bring a wife for his son. And then the Bible said, and Isaac went out to do what? 
meditate in the field in the evening. Then he lifted up his eyes and looked, and then the camels were coming. They were bringing his wife. But what did the man go to the, out to do? Who do you think he might have copied it from? His father. Quietly just went out. He's <clears throat> chewing it. He's chewing whatever God must have told them. Chewing whatever the promises were. He said, how did Abraham learn to meditate? God taught him. God told him, look at the stars. Look at the sun. God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Say, how, one is, how is that one meditation? Abraham had over a thousand people living in his house. He said, how did I know? When he was going to fight in Genesis 14, he had 318 trained soldiers that were born in his house. That means father and mother were in the house. Those guys were born there. That means their parents were there. So Abraham would have had over a thousand people in his house. So God changes your name. Then come and announce to the people, my name is no more Abraham. My name is now Abraham. What would they be calling you every day? How does faith come? So God changed his name so he can be hearing something. God showed him stars. God showed him sand. So at, at the, during the day, he's seeing something. At night, he's seeing something. Throughout the time, he's hearing something. God was teaching him. When Lot left him in Genesis 13, God told him, lift up your eyes. Look northward, southward, eastward, westward, as far as your eyes can see. God was teaching him meditation. God said, take a walk through the land. God was teaching him processing, seeing it, capturing it, imagining it. Because imagination is the image nation. What you see inside, you produce on the outside. How did Jacob beat Laban? He said an angel of God came to show him. Because Jacob and Laban had a deal that all the animals that are spotted, they'll be for Jacob. All the animals without spots, they'll be for Laban. So Laban now carried all the spotted animals and ran away with them. So the animals that were left there were what? Without spots. And the deal is the animals without, with spots, they are your own. Anima <laughs> Laban carried the spotted ones and ran away. So the animals here are without spots. Someone at that point to just say, I am finished. No, you are not. You're just starting. When everything is a way, that's when God says, well, now let's walk. Let's get busy. Sometimes we're not seeing the miracles on the hand of God because there are too many people we are depending on. Too many things we are depending on. Too many things we are hanging on. All right, God says, now let's walk. And the angel showed him and said, get a poplar stick. All right, chip it in between. Basically, you know, if I have this pole here, then I open this place. So why to show inside? I leave this black, I open another space, white to show inside. I leave this black, I open another white to show. I leave this black, I open another. So eventually you see white and black and white and black and white. So I now put white and black and white and white and black in front of animals where they'll be drinking water and it was mating season. So as they are mating and drinking water, they are seeing white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, when they were all going to give birth to children. Animals that were white, spotless, produce white and black. Genetic engineering. It's in the Bible. Genetic engineering. What you place in front of you, you become. Genetic engineering. That's what God was saying in Genesis 11 verse 6. In the building of the Tower of Babel. He said, this thing they have imagined to do will be done. Nothing will be restrained from them that they have imagined to do. Imagination, the image creation. Imagination. Sometimes you are praying, oh God, spouse, husband, husband, husband. But somewhere in you, you are not seeing it. Somewhere in you, you are saying, if I don't even have a husband for this year, it's okay, next year it's fine. So your thoughts and your words are not aligning. You are shouting, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. But inside you, I can still manage. I'm okay. So the image in you is not aligning. It's not agreeing. So one of the ways to rewrite your code, you meditate. Because there's a gushing fountain in you. But it's in your spirit. Your mind has to now go and dig. And dig until it hits the gusher that is inside the spirit already. How you change from poverty to abundance? Pictures. Like I said, that's the area I'm focusing on, so that's not the only thing. But you know, even when God speaks to you, you see what he's saying. He gives you pictures. 
Pictures of possibility. Pictures of a big business. God is giving you pictures. What do you do with those pictures? Meditate. I, like Isaac, go to the field at night. Take a walk. You say, I don't have a field. That's your two-bedroom. That's your one-bedroom. Take a walk from one side of your small mattress to the other. Sit down. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Makes me rich. It has no sorrow. They say, oh, you've done miscarriage one time. Miscarriage second time. Oh, God, is there a curse? Babies are blessings. The fruit of the womb is his reward. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Adds no sorrow. Blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Someone say, what are you doing? I'm building. I'm building. Because when it happens here, it happens. The intangibles. The intangibles. That's why fear comes to you and it's so real. So you don't want to fly in the plane. You don't want to drive in the car. You don't want to be alone at night because it's producing something real. You rewrite that code by reproducing something more real. And the word of God is more real. I will not be afraid of terror by night. No, I will not. As I say it, your brain is shouting, I'm afraid. Get them to come back. I can't stay at home alone. I will not be afraid of terror by night. No, I rather flies by day. Lady, I want to come and stay in your room. Okay? Then you stay in Lady's room. Lady doesn't know why you're there. You're afraid. So you're managing being with Lady while you're still doing. Lady say, let's watch a movie. I don't want to watch a movie. I'll not be afraid of terror by night. Hour by day. You do it for 30 minutes. Lady, good night. Why? Because something is now clicking inside you. But the more you yield to that fear, the more you yield to that fear, you won't enter into this one. Same for sickness, same for, you, you, you dig. Then after a while, you start saying, it's flowing. I don't fall sick like I used to be. I, I don't get like I used to be. It doesn't happen overnight. Now, words can be spoken and it happens overnight. All right? This one is a process, so usually people don't like it. But guess what? When you know how to get it, you will know how to reproduce it. So that when nobody's around you, you know what to do. All right? That's why you could hear men like Ben Sinodos say, take me anywhere in the world. I'll reproduce what I have here. That's become something in them. They dug the well. They owned it. Are you hearing this now? You own it. So it's the Holy Spirit in you. Then you say it. I remember Ken Higgins said, he will be saying, Lord, you are more real to me. You are more real to me than my wife. You are more real to me than this car I'm driving. You are more real to me than this bed I lie on. He said, when he said it, it didn't sound real. Of course, your wife is real. Your car is real. Your bed is real. After weeks, after months, after years, he said, God is literally more real to me than anything around me. What did he do? He walked himself into it. You can school yourself in it. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible tells us, for she said to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be well. The Amplified Bible said, for she kept on saying. She kept on saying. She was schooling herself. I can't be like this. I won't remain like this. I can't be like this. I won't remain like this. But don't forget, Psalm 1 verse 2 says, his delight is in the law of the Lord. It means when you're in hospital bed, Sometimes you need to beg them, please, auntie, turn off that TV. Hospital bed. When you're dealing with a project, deal with it. Because that parable of the sower is classic. Tongues will always come to choke what you're trying to do. For some of us, it's social media. It doesn't be fall on my side, it doesn't on my right hand. Yeah. That's my fellow for certain that's my right hand. <laughs> you either put your phone far away, turn it off. For that period, be sincere with yourself and say, I'm not even checking Bible on my phone. Because you know from checking Bible, you check notification. 
Because the end point of meditation, according to Psalm 1, is you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will bring forth your fruit in your season. Your leaves would never wither. Anything you do, Who likes the end point? It means you have to love the process. In Joshua 1, he said, you will make your way prosperous. You don't have to lie. You don't have to go and become refugee just so that you can travel somewhere. You're a king's kid. You're a honorable person. You don't have to go and tell lies that they are chasing your family. They want to kill you. That's why you want to be in their country. You refugee. You refugee. And many Christians, even spiritual people, will tell that lie just to get visa or to get stay. Anyway. God told Isaac to stay in Gerah when there was famine in Gerah. And Isaac prospered in the land. You meditate day and night. Guys, sometimes you shut down UEFA Cup. Listen, because if you die, if it's a health condition, they will still play UEFA Cup after you're dead. Let's face this thing. I've had days in my life I've had to meditate four hours nonstop every single day because it was a sink or swim situation. It's either this thing works or it does not work. I remember when we went to plant a church in Jabu back then. People have told me churches don't grow here. All right? And some things were looking like they were playing and we were struggling. I remember one of those times I stayed there eight hours pacing the floor. It's easy, no? We are fighting something. You know, once it happens here, and I knew when something snapped, there was like, something else has happened. All right? Now, there are still other maybe silly, stupid decisions I made along the way, but that one. Something snapped. There was no... Meditate. Meditate. All right? Now, sometimes you wonder, but there are too many projects I have. How many verses do I meditate on? There are some I call silver bullets. Hmm? One blow, 20 die. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want that's an open-ended check. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack husband. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack a baby. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack protection. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack defense. The Lord is my shepherd. I will never lack wisdom. The Lord is one, one bullet. One golden bullet. It's not even silver, it's golden. <laughs> Just shoot. And then you're staying there. The Lord is my shepherd. And you mix it with thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord is my shepherd. I do not lack health in my body because he's my shepherd. I do not lack strength because he's my shepherd. I do not lack healing. I do not lack vision because he's my shepherd. I do not lack resources. He is my shepherd. And the one you want to stay on, stay on it more. Sometimes 30 minutes. You know, sometimes you think you've spoken the word for a long time. You open your eyes, you've not done much. But because you don't time it, you deceive yourself and think you've done a lot. I'll time you now. Two minutes. Psalm 23, verse 1. Who's ready? Hold on. Stay on the one you need. If his protection, stay there. If his husband, stay on it for the next two minutes. The Lord, Because the Lord is my shepherd, I will not lack. Let's go. Just go on. Say it to yourself. Meditation means you mutter. Don't think it. You say it to yourself. Now, I know because you don't want to be loud, someone is beside you, it's okay. But be as loud as you can without, you know, feeling you're embarrassing yourself. You're my shepherd. I will not lack health. And don't speak in tongues for the next two minutes, please. It's meditation, not prayer. You're my shepherd. I do not lack. You're my shepherd. I will not lack. I will not lack. I will not lack. If that's what you want to stay on, I will not lack. As long as I follow you, I will not lack. As long as I follow you, you're my shepherd. You lead, I follow. I will not lack. I follow you. You are my shepherd. I will not lack. I will not lack because you are my shepherd. Because you are my shepherd. Ha, because you are my shepherd. 
you are the one that knows where the green pasture is, not me. So I follow you. I will not lack. 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 I will not lack wisdom. I will never lack supply. I will never lack sound health. I will never lack. You are my shepherd. 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 I will not lack. I won't lack. I won't lack. I can't lack. I can't because you are my shepherd. You, the El Shaddai. You, the Jireh. You, the all-sufficient. You, you are my shepherd. How will I lack when I follow you? When I have you, you are my shepherd. 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 I will not lack. I cannot lack. I will not. Don't pray in tongues. Keep talking. Don't pray in tongues. Don't switch. Stay. I will not lack. I can't lack. Can't lack it. No, you are my shepherd. You are my shepherd. Oh. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I can't lack doors. I can't lack opportunities. I can't lack favor. I can't lack anything. You are my shepherd. I will not lack wisdom. I will not lack counsel. You are my shepherd. I do not lead myself. You lead me. You are my shepherd. I do not lead myself. I follow you. You are my shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Was that feeling long? A little bit, sincerely? That was just two minutes. That was just two minutes. So imagine going for 30 minutes. One hour. Use your drive time. Turn off radio. Turn off music. Sometimes even Christian music. Yes. You have sang and sang and sang. Take one line from that song. Pause the rest of the song. Meditate on that line in the song till you get to where you're going. Pause the song. Because the rest of the song is taking you away from what you should have meditated on. I know you need to do Bible reading for the year. And then you want to read three chapters or two chapters a day. And the Holy Spirit is showing you one verse. Stay here. But you are more, no, I want to finish the verse. You want to finish the verse for your sake or for him. And he's saying, stop on this verse for the next two days. Boom, stay there. Drive to work. And then you are in the bus. You enter bus. You want to look for someone to talk to. Sometimes, no, no. Talk to him. 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 You are with me. I am in you. You are with me. Someone say, what are you doing? No, no, no. And then they are talking politics. Face outside the window. They don't need to know what you are doing. And then get home at night, just saying, I want to be in the bathroom for a while. Ah, you won't go do number one or number two. Just want to be there. Because that's the only free space in your house. It's face my face you. Yeah, because you need a space. Hallelujah. Let me tell your neighbor, dig your well. Dig your well. Let it be deep. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's appreciate um, Pastor Rex. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, man of God, for um, that very deep teaching. And... Um, we, we are honored to associate with you and to have you in our corner and to have you as part of this conference. Um, I know you'll be back again. So as, as, as often as you come to Nigeria, 
we'll, we'll ensure that we route you through Abuja to be a blessing to us. That one, it's, 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 it's you, just, you should just know that any time, if you come to Nigeria five times in a year, just route, um, then very soon we'll be bringing, like I told you, we'll be bringing you. We'll just buy you your ticket. You just come, bless us, then you go back. Praise God. And, and, and I'm so grateful to God for what you're doing and how you, how you have stayed on message. And the way God has asked you to stay with the word of faith, that's how I have stayed with the word of wisdom. Because when I found myself among word of faith people, then God was leading me to teach wisdom. I'm like, I'm living my, well, it's the same thing. But as word of faith, word of wisdom is the same spirit that's at work in us. Let's appreciate Pastor Rex once again. And to take us further in this service, please, um, whoever is behind the timer, um, Pastor Buki, you need to talk to the person. Whoever is behind the timer does not know what they are doing. The person does not know what they are doing. So please, it's neon that is going up now, and I'm seeing 45 minutes on the clock. So please, um, Chris, you guys should stay with the order of service and ensure the right thing is done. And the time should not start reading until it comes up. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet this morning as we receive. Yesterday, the glory was heavy in this place. And I'm trusting God for the same this morning. Let's receive the ministry of Neon Adeja. Hallelujah. Can somebody give that praise to Jesus? If that was for me, that was good. But it's for Jesus. Can you raise it even higher? Has it been good to you? I was telling my team yesterday, this has been one of the best conferences that I've attended this year so far. Because of the intentionality of peace on to bring the right people to share the message of the gospel with us. And that's to tell you how amazing a pastor God has given you. So if you know how to celebrate your pastor, can you do even better? So this is not how we celebrate our pastor in Lagos. So is there a tweak to it? Now, okay, I love that. Now you know that without the wife, <laughs> you know, you, wait, 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 wait. With all of the promises that God gave Abraham, um, Adam, it was Eve that took him out of the promises. Just one mistake. So that's the power of the wife. And to see the success and the greatness of what is happening in Holy Hill, it means Pison found the right one. Now can you celebrate Pichak in the house? I don't know what's happening. Why are you celebrating your... I apologize, I apologize. Now, for the last time, I'm not trying to burn time. It's very important. Because what you don't celebrate, you don't attract. So celebrate your pastor and the pastor's wife again. Celebrate peace on and peace jack again for me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And for the amazing Pastor Rex, I love you so much. Ah, you are so intentional with the gospel. You're not wave waving how do they call that english I mean, i'm not an english student but i mean you know what i'm saying can we celebrate pastor rex in the house all the way from canada with this blessing thank you so much sir and the last but not the least can we celebrate pastor yemi davis i know he's not here i call him Bami. can we celebrate him in this house if you were here yesterday you celebrate him more than i'm saying by the time we leave this conference sir we will have all Holy Hill members in different status of governments causing change. Hallelujah. Last but not least, can we celebrate ourselves in this house? Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. It's important that you celebrate yourself. It's important. Now lift your hands to Jesus if God has been good to you. The Bible said for us to lift up holy hands without doubt or doubting. Lift your hands. It doesn't matter what it is that you've seen few hours ago it doesn't matter just lift your hands and sing after me God is good he 
has done me well, oh my soul. That's you meditating. Rise up and praise the Lord. Jesus is good. He has done me well. Oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. Without a music, God is Can you meditate on that for the next 30 seconds? Say, God is good. God is good. Oh, my soul. 15 more seconds. We say, God is good. He has done me well. Oh, my soul. Rise up and pray. And as the river flows, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. We have been talking about the flowing rivers inside of you. As the river flows, as it gushes out, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life-giving river. Oh, let it flow right in right now. One more time. And as the river flows, it's flowing wisdom, it's flowing knowledge. It begins to bring everything in. It's a life-giving river. Oh, let it flow. And out of my belly shall flow the rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Father, this nation shall flow the river. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises were the response to my worship. The fragrance of my worship rose up to the Father. Noises, thundering and quakes were the response. The fragrance of my Rose up to the fire, noise in thundering air. When the response to my worship, the fragrance of my worship, I am rose up to the fire, noise in thundering air. Are you ready? First see my fragrance, then it turns to fire. I worship in my weapon. This is how I win my life. First it was fragrant. Then it turned to fire. I worship in my weapon. This is how I win my battle. Yeah. Are you ready? One more time, can we sing it together? Yay! This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. Can I hear you? The road. This is how I win, say. You're not sounding like winners already. One more time. This is how I win. Say. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. Now. The first it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. Hey, first it was fragrance, then it turned to 
There was no money to do it. But when it was time, the most hardest visa, American visa, I got it in 24 hours. At the point where they said there was no date, they called me from Hades, come to Abuja, come and take your visa. Because I was nominated for an award. I was still meditating. The UK visa came in. I was meditating. Canada came in. I was meditating. And all the other visas started to come in. Not just that. And I've been flying to these nations without paying a flight ticket. How can God do it again? You go to America on business class, you don't buy out, don't be your money. Now that's what I'm going to sign upon somebody in here. Are you ready to receive it? No, you are not ready. You are not ready. Let me go here. Are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to receive it? Now, if this is for you, I want you to live where you are. Look for a space. Find the expression. When you can exercise your authority in Christ, don't be lifted. Don't be left behind. Don't stay where you are. Find it. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hey. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Let the sound Hey, yeah, yeah, 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 Yeshua, ah, 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 ah,
There's no rain. Yeah. Stay on that drum. Stay on that drum. One more song. Said, who is wonderful? Who is wonderful? Who is wonderful? No, 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 no. That's not how to say who the wonderful. Who is wonderful? Who is wonderful? Come on. Who is? It's Jesus. I said, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, who is wonderful? Wonderful. Jesus. Who is wonderful? Jesus. Shout a name. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to see. We are going to see. We are going to start it. Hello, peace on and peace on. Please permit me to do this. Peace on is not here. Pichak, please permit me to do this. The, there's a young man I introduced to you yesterday. I don't know, I feel led to just introduce him to the stage. Um, his name is Felix Jimmy. Do you know Felix Jimmy? How many of you know Felix Jimmy in this place? He stays in Abuja. Uh, why are you like this now? Now everybody scream, Felix Jimmy! If you don't scream it, it will not come out. Everybody scream, Felix Jimmy! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, celebrate this young man, celebrate this young man. The Lord is doing something great with him. And one of the things the Lord taught me this year is collaboration. We have one message and one God. There's no competition, it's collaboration. Because the kingdom of hell is raising soldiers and they are collaborating, they are raising themselves. When they go to O2 Arena, they call the younger generation because they know the effect of that generation to the younger generation. But we try to hide ours and God is saying no more. If you're not ready to collaborate with me, I will pick someone else to do that with me. And so that's why I'm bringing this young man to sing just one song, and I know you will love it. The song is about God being in a class all by himself. Can you do something? Thank you. Above you is you. Jesus, you are the only one in your class. That is the God we said. And below you is still you. You are the only one in your class. Before you is you. My God. Oh, we are where you are the only one in your class. My God, listen to this part. After you will be your Listen, hey! When you speak, no man can question. When you open, no man can shut up. You are the only one in your class. Our confidence is showing you. When you bless, no man can push. When you lift, no man can break down. You are the only one. This is my conclusion. You are the only one in your class. The only one in your class. The only one in your class. Higher. You are the only one. You are the only one in your class. The only one in your class. Of course, we're in the God class. Yes. But there's a place for God all by himself.
can you rejoice if God is the only one in this class? One more time, scream for this TV! Four years ago, the Lord gave me a song. I know you know the song. But every time I sing that song, it brings me back to the goodness of God. That's why I can never be ungrateful. I thought I died. I was electrocuted. I still have the scar in my hand. It went so deep. The Lord said, I'm going to heal you, but I'll leave the scar to make you remember what I did for you. Because until you remember, you cannot be grateful. It is not possible. And then in that process of thought, I was already complaining. And God said, no. When something happens to you, don't complain. Reverse it. Instead, begin to thank God for the things that he has done that you are yet to come into. And I began to thank God. Even when I was, I couldn't even pay the hospital bills. But yet I kept it. That you saved me. We were coming. We were going to the hotel yesterday. And we encountered an accident. The man was crushed to pieces. He was not standing like a man on the floor that is dead. He was crushed. His hand somewhere. His leg, his head somewhere. Right on the road. I think my, 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 my protocol knows what I'm saying. Another man again. The driver also died instantly with the car. Two people dead yesterday. But yeah, I yeah, am. I had that experience that would have killed me. But God kept me for a reason. And I thought that was all he wanted to do. No, he said, no, I'm going to raise you back with a song. And that song has got into nations I never imagined would, that he would get to. He says, more than my mouth can testify. Oh, you know it. More than my mind can comprehend. That's Pastor Yemi David's favorite song. See, I've seen the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure that this is not. Pastor Yemi, I want to give you the mic to say, Is it? See how far you brought me. Is it? So glad you found me well. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace. All my days, I'm yours. Yes, see how far you brought a man like me. When the enemy went for evil, Jesus turned it around. I'm so glad you found me worthy. Cause I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace. Oh my days, <laughs> I will sing. I don't think I'm singing this enough without music. <laughs> I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can tell. Oh my days! If it's not the grace of God, this part say grace found me. Grace me. Grace made me who I am. I'm not in my grace. Grace made me. Grace saved me. Grace made me who Grace found me. Grace made me who I am. Everything I am today is nothing but the grace. Grace redeeming. Grace sustains me. That's why I can stand and say. That's why I can stand and say. Now with your hands wide open, I can see. I can tell, and I know it's your grace. It's your grace. I will 
Leave you with another sound the Lord gave us. He said, Grace is working for me. Oh, grace is working for me. I want you to go this week singing this song. Grace is working for me. Oh, grace is working for me. Just the congregation say great. When you sit in your office, sing the song. When you hear the doctor's report, sing the song. The second part says, Not by power, not by might, but your spirit is moving, always moving. Grace is working for me. Say not by power, not by power, not by might, but your spirit is moving. Grace is working for me. Oh, grace is working. Hallelujah. Can we lift up our hands once again to heaven and thank God for the mighty grace that is at work with us and within our lives. Open your mouth and thank him for the first day of this conference, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and this morning. We are coming gradually to the end of the conference God is closing out the conference in style. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. I like to see your hands up. Both hands to heaven like a funnel. There's grace released already in this place. Power is already here. You can tap in into the power of God. Available to do miracles. To intervene in your finances. To heal your body. To change your situation. To remove garment of shame and reproach. I have no doubt in my heart that this conference will not end without something good happening for you. This conference will not end until certain issues are settled permanently. Lift up your hands and just connect by faith. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we give thanks. You may be seated. Praise God. It is a great honor for us to have on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday morning, not just during the course of the conference, on a Sunday morning, there are very few pastors that will agree to come to your church on a Sunday morning. Particularly when you have a massive ministry. You are not looking for a place to preach. For you to leave your church on a Sunday morning, and you come, they were invited, you gave you date, and the date is Sunday morning, and you accepted. Uh, you love the people. And it's significant for me to have Pastor Yomi here this morning. Because I remembered, for those of you that don't know, he was the one that inaugurated his ministry. I, I thought you would clap better than that. It was on the um, 30th of October, 2011, when he came. And I told him then that, look, you know, I'd spoken with him like three years earlier. And I told him, this is what God has put in my heart to do in the city. And he told me seven things to mind. Seven. In my vision book, those seven things are on the first page. When I was done speaking with him that day, I went to buy a vision book. 
And I wrote the seven things. I'm not going to tell you the seven things. He said the seven things were the things Bishop told him when they were starting their church. So he was going to tell me the same thing Bishop said. And I wrote it down and I started meditating on it. And those seven nuggets, they've shaped this church. They shaped the things we're doing. That's why I didn't have any doubt that we're going to have results because we are learning from the best. And, and when we're done inaugurating that evening, in the morning before he left, he sat me down again and told me some other things that had not left my heart. I won't tell you what he said. But he told me that there's a way you mix this thing. You mix it in a way. He said, look at these people. Look at these people. They, they mix it. Because you are in the city center, doesn't mean you should ignore certain people. Your ministry must be a blend. Noted that. And from time to time, and there are a lot of counsel over the years. Personal excellence, focus, drive. And one thing that I learned from him very closely, having the privilege of working with him very closely, is that place of constant prayer and seeking help from God. He will tell you, pray for me. Pray for me. I hope you are praying for me. We need to pray. We need to pray. So if you are wondering where the fire of prayer came from, it's from those moments. Oh, pray for me. Pray for me. So when things are working, there are principles behind them. So this is a man that nationally and gradually, globally, people are coming to see as a carrier of the wisdom of God. And teaches very simply, but very powerfully. Those of you who didn't come yesterday, you can go and listen to the message and be blessed. I want us to stand to our feet this morning as we receive my pastor. The pastor of pastor, leaders of leaders, Pastor Yemi Davids, the senior pastor of Global Impact Church. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Let's give God praise. Can we, thank, can we thank God for all that we have received? Thanksgiving is application for more. <laughs> Anything you are grateful for actually multiplies. There's power in thanksgiving. Let's give it to God and say, Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for all that we have received. Thank you for a great awakening. Thank you for the rivers of living waters. Thank you for a brand new season. Thank you, Lord. You are the glory and the lifter of our head. To you alone be all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Father, as we get into your word this uh, session, we trust the Holy Spirit again to unveil to us the things that matter to your plans and purpose for our lives. Let there be a mark that cannot be erased. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And God's people shouted. Amen. Okay, let's do it this way. I mean, we've been enjoying ourselves. Can we go around and greet uh, how many people? 20 people. 20 people. You better start on time. We won't continue. Uh, tell them how, how you love them. 20. Yes. Tell them happy new season. Nobody should be looking around or greet someone. Smile. You should be on number 15 by now. Number 16, number 17, 18, 19, 20. 
Can we celebrate Pastor Sunday and Pastor Taco? Thank you. Do it loud, do it loud, do it loud. Uh, is that how you celebrate your pastors? Amen. You know, when you are privileged to be a part of a ministry like this, you keep an eye somehow on them uh, because it's like heaven's investment. And it's one reason why I had to sacrifice to be here this morning. Believe me, with all sense of humility, it's a sacrifice to be here. But, but it's a joyful sacrifice. And I'm praying that the ministry will go and grow from glory to glory. Specifically, the next 12 months, I pray for the irresistible wind of the Spirit to blow in favor of this church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Seeds that have been sown in the last five years that hadn't been harvested. Let the sprouting of the spirit cause the harvest to tumble down this church. Amen. And everyone involved in the givings, let their heavens that are already open, let there be a release. Amen. Whatever, wherever the harvests are, let the angels bring it into your bosom. Amen. Let there be financial breakthroughs Amen. of a higher order Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I saw marriages. I just saw that now. God is a matchmaker. Amen. Amen. I saw the Holy Ghost bringing people together. Some of them are in this place. So. I saw that. So, Pastor, get ready. Yeah. Two weddings at times. Or a whole Saturday wedding, wedding, wedding. Some Thursday. <laughs> Amen. And I pray that when the Holy Ghost shows you, because it's the Holy Spirit, you will recognize the person. Because blessings come our way, and because we can't recognize it, we throw it away. Financial blessings are coming. It will appear as a small opportunity. Don't say I'm bigger than this. If the Holy Ghost nudges your heart to take it, take it. Inside the little lies the great. Inside the five loaves of bread and two fish is the 5,000 and the overflow. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Pastor Rex. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prophet Wale and all the great ministers, good to have you. Chooks, thank you for blessing us. And where God has moved you to, you will flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, can we clap for ourselves also? You are beautiful. You are handsome. Amen. You may please have your seat. Genesis 22, verse 15. We, I, 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 believe me, you need to get yesterday's message. Download it and share with people. We so I want to bridge the covenant with the Holy Spirit a bit more this morning. God is a covenant-keeping God, uh, and the Holy Spirit is the executor of that covenant in the New Testament order. Okay, but I want to just look at the background of what we said yesterday about the fact that God is committed to the covenant. Uh, Genesis twenty-two fifteen. Genesis 22, 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. That was when he gave his only begotten son, which made God to, to give his only begotten son to his own seed. You know, what you say is what you reap. Okay. So, and God said, by myself, I have sworn. Now, that made a lot of difference. When oath comes into play, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not returned your son, your only son, in blessing, I will what? Now, this is who you are. In blessing, I will bless you and multiply you. I will multiply your descendants as what? Stars of the heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore. I wanted to see the fact that the covenant gives us access to the blessings. We are redeemed and blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Those blessings automatically ought to produce multiplication. Now, this is so significant because it talks about the quality of multiplication and quantity. For the sun, it shows that it's unlimited. As stars, it shows that you will shine. So it was giving Abraham how his seed will manifest. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as stars 
of heaven, not as taco under the earth. That is, they are multiplying, but quality, financial quality, educational quality, whether you are in ministry or you are in industry, whatever you are in, think as a star. That's how God described you to Abraham, because you are the seed of Abraham in Christ Jesus. And then as sand, talking about the unlimited place of that multiplication. Glory to God. Now, I'd like us to have this in message translation. You know, when I, when I saw this several years ago, it says, in, multi, in blessing, I will bless you. God was like looking for the right word to explain to Abraham the way I will bless you. So what came to my mind it was when I was young. You know, when you do some things wrong, and your mother said, I'm beat you. You know that kind of beating? He said, okay, you know, just spank you. But when you do, do something, your mother said, I will beat you, eh? The way I will beat you. He said, in beating. <laughs> then you know that it's another class of beating. So look at it in the message. He said, oh, I will bless you. Oh, how I will bless you. And I will make sure your children flourish. Like what? Stars in the sky. Like sand on the beaches. I found church growth inside this place. That sand, people must come, overflow. Found prosperity there. So, oh, I will bless God. Was trying to say, ah, I wish Abraham can understand the kind of blessing, the way I will multiply him, the way I will do. It. Oh, he said, Oh, I will bless you. I will, oh, how I will bless. One version says, I will bless you with incredible blessings. What? Incredible means difficult. That is, there are dimensions in our lives that the natural man will not understand. And that's the kind of expectations you should have that the Holy Ghost will do from this season. How can Abraham get into a particular land? There was famine in the land. He went into the land. He was even afraid. He had to lie. That, well, not lie, partial lie, that this is my sister and not my wife. And the king said, well, if it's his sister, I could marry his sister. And then the king picked his sister. Sorry, his wife. And then God now started fighting the man. It's not your wife, who, it's somebody else's wife. And then by the time they said, they gave him gold and silver and sheep and goat and even employees. The man that came in out of you know, fear of famine was leaving the place with prosperity and increase. Now, if you now leave that place and they ask you, how did you prosper? What was his business strategy? You now say, um, um, when I entered the land, the king now liked my wife. Uh -huh. And then I lied, actually. So God now intervened on my behalf because it's a covenant keeping God, because I get back in, you know. So, so he now told the king that if you don't return the woman, I will deal with you. So the man, when he was now returning the, my wife to me, he now gave me a lot of money. Will you believe that? Tell you that kind of story? That's incredible blessings. Difficult to explain. So when you look at that Genesis 22, verse 17, two words, flourish. Someone say flourish. flourish. Flourish means to grow vigorously, to expand, to thrive. So in the midst of famine, we thrive. In the midst of darkness, we shine. That word flourish, I will ensure that your seed flourish. So we are destined by God to flourish in business, to flourish in our careers, to flourish in our ministry. You can go on your own, check the dictionary. Everything you say about the meaning of flourish is your destiny. I have to look at it. If I want particular definition says to get to the top in your endeavors, to flourish. Another thing that you see there is the word overflow. Huh. How can you, can you really count the sand? On the beach. Endless. Unlimited. So the Holy Ghost began to, you know, say to me that this dimension of the manifestation of God's covenant in our lives is the overflow. Is the overflow. And it took me on a journey of the overflow. And I want us to see how that uh, manifests in our lives. You are living this place today with an activation that where you are looking for one, you will find seven. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. You are trusting God for husband. Eh? You say, God, God, James, Joshua, Jack, 
will not show up. <laughs> Eligible. The prayer will not be, Father, which one? I, I'm giving you practical things that would happen. Oh, job, job, job. No, I mean, a lady shared a testimony in our church last week. She, had, she said she had to come out and say it to everybody that she was having a problem with a job and she keyed into the overflow. And then three powerful jobs showed up. That is now a good problem. May you enter that kind of good problem. <laughs> overflow. Somebody say overflow. overflow. Psalms 22, 23, verse 5. Overflow. You remember, uh, because you have been in low deba, <laughs> does not mean God wants you to be in medium deba. No, it's the palace. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my help, my head with what? My cup runs. Can somebody say it? My cup runs. NIV says my cup overflows. Overflows. Can you see that? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That means the enemy cannot do anything. They can just watch. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. My cup overflows. Finance overflows. That is the realm of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Executing the covenant. Remember, they had uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. It looks like Lodiba. It looks like it's never enough. They had to feed 5,000 people, uh, aside children and women. If you add them together, how many? 15 guinea. More women are 10 crusade than men. So if you have 5,000 men, can you assume a bit? Maybe some, at least minimum, or maybe 5,500 women. Maybe. And then the children. And then you have five loaves of bread and two fish. And I said, Lord, you could have just multiplied the thing and let everyone be okay. Why is it that after they were filled, not managed it, they were filled. They were filled. They had 12 baskets left. It's, I said, Lord, in our own dimension, when the cup, can I have a cup? You have a cup there by, by, by chance. I said, Lord, a cup, a cup, 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 a glass cup, any cup, you know, just a cup or something, or a container. Any, just something just to fill, or the one that's already full, just let's just, you know. I said, Lord, okay, thank you. Okay, I hope. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I said, Opie oh, can. You're filling it, filling it. If it's full, I said, God, I'm okay. I said, but you continue. It's not a flow. I said, why do you do that? He said, it's my signature. Do <laughs> you understand? I'm not just enough. I am more. I need you to start seeing God in that light. I said, Lord, we consider it as waste. He said, well, the reason why you see it as waste is because in my own realm, it's too much. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make anything to me. He said, it's my, it's my signature to prove that I'm not a man. Yeah. Like that young man sang, he's in a class of his own. And that's our class. So I won't just feed the 5,000 men. No, I have to sign on it. Yeah. <laughs> that the, where it's coming from, it's unlimited. That's why I can tell Abraham, I will multiply your children as sand on the seashore. That signature will show in your life this year like never before. Yeah. Ah, say it louder, amen. Yeah. Signature. You remember King Jehoshaphat? Second Chronicles 20? Five armies came against a whole nation. It was too much. Having victory is enough. Second Chronicles 20, 22. Let's go to 22. I mean, God giving you victory is okay. But God said, ah, I'm not just okay. I'm more than. Look at this. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord said what? Ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Manasseh, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Now, verse 23. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Manasseh to utterly what? Kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy. Verse 24. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, 
They looked towards the multitudes that there were dead bodies falling to the earth. No enemy escaped. If this thing ended here, we are okay. Because we didn't even shoot any arrow, any missile or anything. And now we have the victory. It's enough for us to be singing. But God said, I'm not just enough. I am more than enough. Look at the next verse, 25. Hallelujah. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an what? Abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves. More than they could carry away. And there were many days. That's overflow. Three days. So imagine uh, in, in the township, a husband is going for war. You know, those days the wife will be praying, hey, my dear, come back. Eh? God, we, God of Abraham will bring you back. He said, Amen. And then you know, so your husband coming back after the war. That you even see him afar. Ah, praise God. He survived. You now see him with dollars, pounds sterling, cars. Yes, sir. Did you go to war? <laughs> or you went to do business? God will surprise us this year. Because of the manifestation of the Spirit, there will be dimensions that nobody will beg you to kneel down to give him praise. You know, when I was growing up in the faith, they say things like, eh, when you break through, you might backslide. No, it depends on how the breakthrough came. When Peter saw neck breaking, boat sinking breakthrough, they didn't preach to him. He said, I'm a sinner. There are breakthroughs that happen by the hand of God that moves you closer to Jehovah. You just love him the more. Just like Mephibosheth, we said yesterday, you just, because you, you, you can tell that it's not my hard work. Yes. It's the blessing. Yes. Somebody says the blessing. Yes. Say, I have the blessing. Yes. Overflow. Let's talk about what helps us to key into the overflow. I believe in keys. Jesus Christ said, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys. That's the work we have to do. Not the legalistic work of the old covenant. You have to walk, W-A-L-K, in the covenant. How do I get saved? What is the key? Believe in your heart and what? That is the key. It's not by singing. If you are singing in your neighborhood, are you saved? No, the key is to believe and confess and then you are saved. So when you are studying the word, the Holy Ghost now begins to show you the keys we call it revelation, on how to unlock or activate or unleash this covenant. The first thing that I have learned is what Pastor Rex touched on heavily. These blessings we are talking about is location sensitive. It's not just, uh, I can go anywhere. I can just carry my load now as I'm going to Russia to do ministry. No. No. The Lord is my I shall not want. It is where he leads me that it manifests for me. God made places before he made people. You understand that? There was a garden before Adam. You, you have to understand that there is a place for your flourishing. Your cousin might go to Canada. It might not be for you. So if, you have to even, if God is telling you to leave a particular location, come down and even ask him. Don't just, okay, they say this one is good. No, which one, Lord? Direction is more important than power. Let me show you a scripture um, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 6. So we're going to pray in tongues about this. Direction, don't just leave your... I mean, I've seen people in our church, when they get a new job, it's okay to have a new job, just ask the Holy Spirit to I move. I've seen cases that people moved, it got better, and somebody else, as they moved, everything went down. And you see it in football at times. Right? Somebody's playing well in a particular team, and the one big team, so called, is looking for him or her. And then, because it looks so good, they jump there, and that was the end of their. Uh, hazard was like that. You didn't hazard, have we? Yes, yes. Now, when they had gone through Frigia, how do you pronounce that? Pastor? Frigia. Now, when they had gone through Frigia and the region of Galatia, they were what? Are you mad? Are you had it for the Holy Ghost? You don't say God forbid. It wasn't that advice I don't go to Asia. They were forbidding. That's strong. <laughs> Are there places that God will not want you to get into for now? 
Look at the next verse, 7. Oh, this is location sensitive. Verse 7. Verse seven. The next verse. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into where? But what? So, Lord, I have met Bolanle and Chinyere. Father, which one of them is my wife? It might be none of them. It might be one of them. It's not Asia. It's not Bithynia. Look at the next verse, verse 8. So, passing by Mysia, they passed the place. They came down to Tras. Uh-huh. Next. So, uh, a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Verse 10. Verse 10. Now, after he had seen the vision, he, by his own interpretation of work with the Holy Spirit, he immediately sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So it wasn't Asia. It wasn't that place. It was Macedonia. This blessing is location sensitive. You will not miss Rodo. Yeah. Even for Isaac in Genesis 26, 1 to 5, he wanted to rush to Egypt like his dad. And God said to him, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in this land and I will bless you there. That obedience was what now led to verse 12. He now labored in that land. Look at verse 12, verse 12. Isaac sowed or labored, worked, did business in that land and reaped in the same year hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Next verse, next verse. The man began to prosper and what? Continue prospering until... This is because he stayed where God told him to stay. But he was so prosperous, they envied him. So when you hear Psalm 23, it's, don't just be praying all the prayers in Psalm 23. Focus on that first one. Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 14. Guide my steps. The meditation Pastor X dealt with, you combine it with praying. You will know. You will know. You will know inside you if you are patient and humble. Not decided before you prayed. Not trying to compete with your cousin or under pastor. You will know in your heart. As you only goes, This is the issue at hand. What should I do? Should I step forward? I mean, I, I've prayed several along these lines. And you sometimes it's the waking up in the next morning as I'm worshiping God. A text will just drop into your spirit. An email. A tweet. Inside you. You just know that I'm not supposed to go to a learning today. And other times, you, will, you just see the green light. In fact, sometimes I've just woken up like that with a song. I say, Holy Ghost, what is this? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit. They are the sons of God. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit in this place, I want to appeal to you. See the pastor hold his neck like this. I want to baptize today. <laughs> Call any of the leader. You need to pray in the tongue. Uh, we, we, we flow better if I speak your language. So praying in the Holy Ghost helps you to connect. Just connect so that all the outstanding text messages that have been hanging can drop. How will you feel if Abraham didn't hear that God said you should not kill Isaac again? I mean, because, I mean, sometimes we just read those things. God said you should go slay his only begotten son. You now got there and God was saying, okay, don't kill him again. He now started claiming, God told me. God told me it's different from what God is telling me. So it's a, it's a daily walk. Eh? He will now kill the child and say, it was God that told me. Ah, you have killed somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Lift your right hand and say, the Holy Spirit is guiding me every day through, my inward, through the inward witness, through the word of God. The Holy Spirit is guiding me. Another thing that we must watch out for is strife. You see, all these things has to do with the environment where the Holy Spirit flourishes. He's a spirit of love. So things like unforgiveness, bitterness, malice, does not allow the Holy Ghost to you know, have his way in our lives. And the enemy knows that. That's why people hurt you every day. Somebody might hurt you before you leave this service again. Because that environment is not conducive for the Holy Spirit to thrive in us. And it's our helper, our counselor. So anything that will tamper with your love work, fight it like you are fighting Satan. Oh, fight it like you are what? 
fighting Satan. Genesis 13 verse 5. Remember, Lot and Abraham. I just noticed that covenant fathers, they were always, Lot also who went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents. Next. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together for their possession was so great that they could not dwell together. Yes. Now there was what? Strife between the herdsmen. Herdsmen. <laughs> okay. Of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lord's livestock. The Canaanites and the predators that dwelt in the land. Look at verse 8. So Abraham said to Lord, please, this blocks the blessings. This hinders my work with my God. Let there be no what? And between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Verse 9. It's not the whole land before you. Please separate. Oh, go. If you take left, I will go right. If you go right, I will go left. These things has a lot to do with understanding. He said, Lord, no problem. Just go. Just uh, no, no fight. It's going to hinder. Pastor Rex talked about uh, uh, Isaac. Have you noticed that the worst they were digging, there was strife, but he would leave it and go and dig another one. They were always avoiding strife. James 3, I think verse 16. He said, where there is envy and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. Hope couples are here. Are you listening? When a breakthrough is coming close to the family, that's when one person will start hurting each other. Uh, when you see strife, see it as John the Baptist of Satan's main attack. There's something coming. He wants to use that strife to block the flow of God's favor. It's, God has favored you. It's not God's side. Now it's our side to battle to win. That no, this is my part. This is my portion. But when you notice strife coming up incessantly, there's a breakthrough around the corner that the enemy is so jealous of. He's looking for what to do to make you miss it. So go higher. Overcome evil with good. Forgive that your staff that left you. Another one is coming. That'll be seven times better. Stop dwelling on it. How can, how can, how can he leave me? Usman, Usman. I took Usman up when he was in secondary school, paid everything. And you have been saying that for the last one year. What is it? Let him go. Send him money. And Samaila will come. <laughs> Seven times better. I'm telling you, you broke up a relationship. I know it's hurting the way the guy left you or the lady left you. But let it go. If I pray for him or her to get married on time, let him go. You, you realize that Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, they entertain certain losses, so to say, to experience overflow. By the time Isaac was digging, he got to a place, he now had Rehoboth. Now God has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Wives, forgive your mother-in-law. Mm. As the boy shared a very humorous story, but uh, it's humorous, but it's, he said one day he received a letter from a woman, a mother. He said, please pray that God will kill my daughter-in-law. I'm telling you. He said after like a month or two, he received another letter of a daughter-in-law praying that, say, Pastor, the baby, please pray with me that God will kill my mother-in-law. It was the same people. Nothing opens the door to Satan's attack like strife. It blocks the blessings. And the enemy knows that. So they're offending the office and you're carrying bitterness. All this, I will never talk to that person again. Stop it. Go higher than that. And it's enlightened self interest to, to forgive. You're not really doing that person good. You're doing yourself good if you understand what is at stake. Ah, let him go. There are people you have to send a message today or tonight to. That you've not spoken to for three years. And you come to church and pray in the Holy Ghost. You call or send a message. And it's so bad for some people. It's their mother or dad. Tell your neighbor, forgive. forgive. Tell the other neighbor, forgive. forgive. It's so strong. In fact, it's like things come to a, 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 like a standstill, like stagnation. When the thing lingers too much in your heart. Hearing from the Holy Spirit becomes kind of blood. And it's not the Holy Spirit, it's actually you. And the Holy Spirit will never force you. But it's there as a spirit of love to help you. These are things we even need to pray. But Holy Spirit, you're my helper. Help me to forgive this person. 
and then he begins to work on you through a revelation or a explanation. There are times the Holy Ghost will tell you that person, if they knew better, they will behave better. In fact, there are many people that instead of keeping malice with them, you should feel for them. Compassion. That, ah, ah, how can he behave like that? Ah, what, a, what, what a level of thinking. What a level of understanding. Ah, ah, you, out of that, you don't pray. Lord, help her. Please, for my sake. <laughs> Sammy, finally, this morning is the giving covenant. Ah, overflow, don't overflow. <laughs> you see how overflow reaches your family members? <laughs> eh? It started here, it has entered my. You know, this covenant is so strong that it radiates. I saw that in my family, that not just the nuclear family is preserved, even the extended. You know why? Some things that touch them will affect your heart. Like Paul said, Epaphroditus or something that, he said, God had mercy on him. And on me also, lest there be sorrow upon sorrow. If something happens to your mother in the village, it will affect your weakness, isn't it? And so she must be protected. It's a radiation under the canopy of the covenant. Glory to God. Okay, Luke 6, 38. Nothing enhances multiplication like the giving. I know Pastor Sunday preaches about giving. Uh, you keep multiplying as you give. Believe me. God is always... I mean, that's how God revealed it to me. Look at feeding the 5,000. I thought Jesus would just open his head and say, I'm your son. Let there be a giggy bread and sardine. Let it fall now on the people. No. He was asking, what do you have? What do you have? I, I need a point of contact. Five loaves of bread. Bring it, bring it, bring it. And then he blessed it. Give, and it will be what? Good measure. Press down, shaking together. And that's the overflow. So when it comes to giving in the church, advancing God's kingdom, you do it joyfully. Second Corinthians 9, verse 6. This was how God trained me to grow in finances. But this I say, he will what? So sparingly, we also what? And he will so... <laughs> now verse 7. So let each one give. So Paul was correlating giving as sowing. That's where we got the word seed. I know it has been bastardized by some people, but it doesn't negate the original. This is authentic understanding. He was saying that giving is sowing. And he said it categorically that if you do it sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If it's one plot, it's one plot. If it's one acre, it's one acre. So we must desire to grow in our givings by working this covenant. Look at the next, uh, maybe verse 10, I think because of time, verse 10 which was a breakthrough for me. He says, Now may he who supplies what? Who supplies the seed in the first place? <laughs> who gave Abraham the seed to sow? Oh, this is my son, Isaac. Who gave it to him? Eh? Was, he, was he your ability to fertilize? No! He supplies seed. So I learned many years ago that the first thing I have to believe God for is seed. Especially when I'm seeking a higher order. Because he supplies seed. Oh, Lord, I, I want to do 5 million this year or 20 million. I trust you to provide this seed. Let the angels bring it my way. You supply seed to the person that wants to sow. And then look at the next line. Please stay on that verse. And bread for food, supply. And what does it now do? Multiply the seed. We have sown. <laughs> you sow Isaac, you reap a nation, human beings. You sow mango, you reap mango. You sow singing, you reap a lot of songs. Eh? Ushers, I mean, choir members. If you sow singing alone, don't give offerings. They'll be giving you a lot of uh, CDs or something like that. <laughs> As the boy said one time, people are giving him ties, ties, ties. They will travel to Australia. They will bring Thai. I said, what is the problem? He said, God said, what have you been giving people? Mm. Ah, okay, it's true. And that's why I give people suits. <laughs> this thing works. 
so bountifully and reap bountifully. Many times when you are asking God for certain breakthroughs, that's why the Holy Ghost, the executor of the covenant, will breathe in your heart to sow a particular seed. You hear the Holy Spirit say, I should give my car. He wants to connect. I give one million, give $10,000, give this, so that the thing can just, you know, want to pick up to multiply. Philippians 2, I think 13. So you look at the track. It's the one that gave me seed. Then Philippians 2, 13 now makes it clear that it says, for it is God who works in you, both to what? And to? Pastor, do you understand that? Even the willingness to give comes from the Holy Spirit. Because you might not give Isaac. He's your son. You can carry him. Ah, didn't Jonah run away when God told him to go to Nineveh? He said, okay, sir. He was praying. He was prophet. Okay. Arise, my son. Go to Nineveh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm pretty, yes, sir. And he finished praying. God was looking at him. He carried his bag. He said, Nineveh, go. Nineveh. Nine. <laughs> and went to the park and bought tickets for Tashish. So Abraham might not have given Isaac. That's why he's the father of faith, so to say. So the will to even give the seed comes from him. So this is where glory goes to God. The seed he gave me. The will, the strength to drop, to drop it is a big thing. Jesus cried when get some Go and look at it. He said, if it's your will, remove this cup. So, so to drop it is the one that walked the want to will. So he gave me the willingness to give it. It's not the one multiplying the seed. Who takes for the glory? No, 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 that I give something. God must give me glory. No. What you gave, he gave you. The grace to drop it, he gave you. The multiplication, he did it. The all glory goes to him. All glory. All glory goes to him. Anytime the Holy Spirit, the executor of the covenant, points to anything in your life to give, you should be excited. There must be something coming. Something. How can you compare Isaac to Israel today? And us, believe me. There were attacks on Israel overnight from Iran. I'm sure you have seen it, in case you've not seen it. 99% of the things that were thrown was shielded by the innovation of that land. Te, te, te from Abraham. If they reciprocate that thing they did now to those people now, they'll say that's a product. They're, they're, they're not nice. You don't have shield, though. They don't have. You threw over 300 drones, suicide drones, into a nation. If they took carry 300 of what they have now and throw it there, you would think that they are wicked. But you look at that tiny nation from Isaac. I will make of thee a great nation. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Finally, one major key to the overflow is joy. Is somebody excited? Joy. Say joy. Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish and gave thanks. Can you do it if you have to feed 5,000 men aside children and women? Would you be praying, pray to prayer? Father, we are stranded. Yeah, they will die, Father. What is this? <laughs> What's it? Until you are grateful for the five loaves, you might not see the overflow. We wanted to move some years ago from one part of the good land to another. And because we were trying to move, we were now neglecting where we were. You know when you want to move, like, this was old now. You knew, and I just saw that everything got stuck. I said, God, what's the problem? He said, look, you got to a point where you are not appreciating where you are again. You are approaching it with some sense of murmuring and complaining. He said, no, I won't take that from you. He said, in fact, I want you to renovate where you are very well, like a normal movie. Because you will move from glory. Do you understand that? So that mansion you saw in your vision, eh, that one room you have now, you go there today and be praising God, not coming down. If not for this Abuja. If I was in Ikorodu now, I have a mansion. That one room, you give thanks. And when I say give thanks, you celebrate your five loaves of bread. Put one paper. Let it be beautiful. You move from glory. I know that job is not the job maybe you deserve, but that's where you are now. Get there tomorrow morning. Organize your table. Rejo if you don't receive it, it, you're not ready for the next one. Some people are in this church now. They might not have received their pastor. It happens to people. 
Mm. And the blessing on the house is not manifesting because they believe a prophet should have their beer. <laughs> is he really a prophet? No, no, it's Ogidibu, no, no, it's a, it's a teacher. So they'll be calling other prophets, so to say. And when he's praying for them, when in church, they'll say amen, amen, amen. Because to them, it's just, it's because I'm living around this place. I'm telling you what thing my life. Some have not even received their wife. I'm telling you, they married the person. After five years, ah, I wish I married Bolando. Hey. They have not received their husband. I, I wish for. Ah. You have to receive the fact. The disciple said, what is this amongst many? Like, it's not, it's, it's not sense. This job, this accommodation, this project, it's, not, it's too small. Jesus said, bring it. The miracle was inside there. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it away. And then he lifted it up and said, Lord, thank you. Eh? And blessed it. And he multiplied. Only you rejoice over where you are. A cars are coming. Rejoice. I love what I see when I came to. You should even receive yourself first. Eh, I can have a black like this. Eh? I wish I was born in Australia. Oh, you're not born in Australia. You're not going to Australia. You are here. You know? And stop cursing the president. Pray for them. If you must talk about issues, face the issues. The land might not yield for you when you slander the land. Receive the five loaves of bread and two fish. Receive it. I love my wife. I love the children. I have four daughters. The fourth one, we thought it was going to be a boy. I didn't even ask her the scanning. Don't do scanning. I said, boy, I even named him Samuel. <laughs> we got to hospital in the U.S. She came out. The doctor says, they should give us a name now. They have to do their naming thing. I said, Samuel. <laughs> so, I said, there's no Samuel less. I mean, so. It was there we had to name Adasa. Yeah. But God said to me, I have a plan for her life. Don't, don't look at your children and be wishing somebody else's children. Your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's deep freezer. Deep freezer. <laughs> Rise up on your feet. Stand down. Do. It is joy that engineers and helps thanksgiving. I'm grateful, Lord. Thank you for 2024. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Then God, the color will be added because the Holy Ghost will not be leading you, guiding you. Out of joy, you will draw waters out of the wells. Of, lift your voice and give God praise. Give God praise. I know you are not where you want to be, but you are not dead. Thank you for the five loaves, the seeming five loaves of bread and two fish. If you have a song in your heart, sing it where you are. If you say, Lord Jesus, you are complete. You know, you're already complete in Him. So all those things are going to change. Thank you for your ministry. If you minister of the gospel here, thank you for your wife. Ah, your children, your local assembly, Holy Hill. Thank you, Lord, for this great assembly. I'm grateful. Thank him for your health. Thanksgiving. The Holy Spirit flourish, flourishes in, a, in an atmosphere of praise. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Into his courts with praise. Thank him. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Now, beyond those things, can you thank him for the Holy Spirit? Ah, the rivers inside the Holy Spirit will love you. You are the dependable helper. You are more than enough, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We are glad you are here. We are not helpless. We are not stranded. We know what to do. You are the comforter even when there is a challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woman, don't despise these days. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. 
when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done. fresh oil at this conference as the word and the sessions were going fresh unction to function is being released upon us we receive Psalms 23 verse 5 our cup runs over revelation runs over joy runs over insight runs over strength runs over finances runs over advancement runs over customers and clients opportunities runs over we are led by the Holy Spirit. Even where we have missed it, your mercy redirects us. And the enemy is disappointed. It will end in praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, I have his soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, let's give thanks unto God. Let's put our hands together. I can't hear you. Put your hands together. Father, we bless and magnify your holy name. In Jesus' precious name. Please, you may be seated. I want us to quickly... Let's ushers around you, wherever you are. Let's take our offerings. Please just wave your hands. If you need to do a transfer, the account details are on the screen. If you need to do a transfer, the account details are on the screen. Let's quickly put that together. And let me also appreciate Pastor Yemi Davids. Let's appreciate God's servant for that deep insight into his word. And he brought some of his books and they are very limited copies that are here. I think for each of the books, we only have six copies and there are four of them. So there are 24 copies of the books. Um, so it's fastest finger first. The book stand is outside, right at the entrance. Um, there are four distinct books on different subjects. Um, Escaping Relationship Crisis, Love Lounge, Love Lounge, How to Escape Relationship Crisis, Light Up Your Destiny, a must read for anyone who places value on destiny, how to become a star, then Leadership 
wisdom, leadership wisdom, and leadership pitfalls and how to avoid them. So just six copies each. And um, so these ones that are here are my own. So just five copies each. Um, five copies each. And for, they are 5,000 for one. Praise God. If you are ready with your offering, please just leave them over your head and just speak a word. I want you to thank God for the grace to give all the time. The grace he has given to us to be givers. The grace to give. The grace to give. Let's thank him for the giving grace. And if you need to renew that giving grace, this is a good time to pray the Father. In case your fire and your desire to give has waned, I want you to pray. Let's connect that seed in your hands right now to that grace that is flowing in this place. That Father, you put inside my spirit again. The grace to be a giver, consistent giver, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' mighty name. All right. Um, so the ushers wait on us. Let's do that. Has it been a wonderful week? Yes. Has it been a wonderful week? Yes. So we will be having this same conference next year. Um, David. Please give the media guys the flyer for the next year conference. Let them put it up quickly. Chooks, you guys should um, please lay hold of next, next year flyer. I have, the, I have a copy um, here. So next year is going to be bigger and more intense. And we are giving you one year notice to plan yourself and plan your calendar. You cannot afford to miss any session next year. So the awakening 2024, the, sorry, 2025, the awakening 2025, the theme is the triumphant church. And Pastor Yemi Davis will be back with us. Please, you're giving them, so they'll put it up, they'll put the flyer up in a moment. So Pastor Me David is back with us. And Pastor Godman Akinlabi will be with us. <laughs> Apostle Tokwe Aladunusi will still be with us next year. Apostle Emmanuel Iren will be with us. <laughs> then Apostle Femi Lazarus will be with us. Then my friend, Apostle Aroma Osai, will be with us. Bishop Wale Ajayi will be with us. Pastor Bolaji Idowu will be with us. Pastor Daniel Olawande will be with us. Then Pastor Ayo Ajani also will be with us. So, um, he's getting stronger getting stronger and 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 amen and i'll be here too i'll be here so we we will have a video ready to send them the video let them play the video for the conference we are set please put it up let me leave the video leave the leave it there so it starts on monday the 31st of march and ends on sunday the 6th of april so please, when you should plan your holiday. There will be two public holidays in that week. First and second are public holidays, confirmed. So apply ahead now for, tell them you have a family function <laughs> that they are fixed. So Monday to Friday, just evening sessions, Saturday morning session, Sunday, Saturday evening, then Sunday morning like this will end. And each of these sessions will have three speakers, three. So, and we start 5.30 and end about 9.30, 10 o'clock. Abuja is a very simple place. In 20 minutes, we are in your house. And at least we did it this year. We're leaving 9.30, 10 o'clock, even 11. And we're here and we're fine. So we've seen with this one that we can do three sessions conveniently. And if we do three sessions, 
um, eight times. That will be 24 teachings. 24 teachings mean, meaning that you have six months teaching in one week. Your life must move. Even if you escape this person, this other person will catch you. If you don't understand Arome, you will understand Pastor Yemi. One of the ladies was saying that, me, I don't go understand what the man is saying. <laughs> See, I don't understand anything that he said. <laughs> it's okay. And there are people that will not understand anything until they hear Rome. And that's why we are bringing this variety of ministers to come and be a blessing to us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And these are relationships that I've built over the years. Don't trivialize it. Please, next year, if we don't turn up, I will stop the conference. Yeah, if we don't turn up, because um, the, the, I see you people on Sundays, you come. I want every day to be like Sunday. If we cannot agree to do that, then we'll be doing an online conference. I will tell them to record their messages. We'll stream it on Facebook and YouTube. Anywhere you are, you take your notes. Since you are busy. Uh -huh. But please, I want every day to be like Sunday. And of course, by the grace of God, next year we'll, 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 we'll definitely be in a bigger facility. I can see that in my spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Once again, let's appreciate my pastor, Pastor Yemi David. And also appreciate Pastor Larry Rex on North Sawyer. And all the pastors, all the leaders of this ministry for our tireless work. Um, for the first time since I've been doing a conference, I, I feel drained. Like God, I'm running on my last gas. But I thank God for strength that he has given us because it has been back to back in the last six weeks. Back to back, back to back, back to back. I said, God, you want to kill me? He said, I'm, I'm training you to do things that you don't think you can do. And now that we've done this, we've seen this, we give God all the praise and all the glory. And there's something that I want to say. There's something that I want to say to us. I, you know, um, I've been praying about this for the past three days. And I want you to, you know, when Pastor Yemi started teaching in the line of giving, in the last few days, it has been on my heart to tell us to give. I want you to give. And I want it to be a sacrificial seed. And let me tell you what you should do. On Wednesday, when apostles started teaching and saying some things about a new season and a new anointing, and Pastor Yemi came and started saying the season of overflow, there's a connection between them. And this is what I think you should do, because I've been praying about this church, and, and the Spirit of God has started telling me 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. I've been hearing that in my heart, 10 times, 10 times. So most of the seed that I usually give to people, he said, do it 10 times. I want to encourage someone here this morning. Let it just be between you and God. Pray about it. Let him tell you what to do. Because when the season opens, if you listen to the prayer, Pastor Yemi was praying, like there's a 12 month window that has been opened. When rain is falling from heaven, if you don't have seed in the ground, that rain will not benefit you. The best is that you have cool weather. But if you don't have yam or granite or corn in the ground, that rain is wasted on you. So, and we are coming into a new season. I want to encourage you to sow a seed. And it should be something that is, it should be sacrificial. I don't want to call it any name. You can call it your overflow seed. You can call it your new season seed. But it should be something, whatever you are given, let it be divisible by 10. You are the one that will determine what you want to give a million, you want to give 500,000, you want to give 10,000, 100,000, 1,000 naira. But make sure that whatever you are doing can be divided by 10. Because what I'm seeing in my spirit is that God is going to be making most of us here, if not all of us here, 10 times more. 10 times more. 
Now you are the one that will determine how many ten times more you will see. If you have five times ten, a thousand times ten, a million times ten, that one is totally in your hand. I want us to lift up our hands again and say, Father, we we'll receive grace. We we'll receive grace to be doers, walk in us, both to will and to do. Let the grace to sow be released upon our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name. Can we allow Pastor Yemi and Pastor Rex, please? Let's allow them. Let's appreciate them well, please. Appreciate them. All right, you may be seated. Pastor, Pastor Buki, please come and take the other things. Welcome our first timers and pray for the student. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for service. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've been ministered to. And that's instruction peace on giving applies to you as well you can sow in and receive your own increase receive your own multiplication so please take advantage of it and don't feel you're left out if this is your first time you joined us for service we would love to welcome you we want to celebrate you we want to get to know you so whatever platform you're watching us on please put in the chat box and let us know that this is your first time joined us for service we want to celebrate you we're excited um, that you joined us for service, that you joined us for the Awakening Day 7. It's been a thrilling ride. If you've been with us from day one up till now, God has brought us, as has been said, into a new season. And uh, we are excited to see the impact of that in your life. So please, please feel free. Let us know if it's your first time. We want to give you a shout out. We want to celebrate you. We want to get to know you. Let's um, take the following announcements very quickly. So Wednesday, we're back um, on Wednesday, our Wednesday service by 5.30 p.m., but it's a Wednesday service with a difference. Wednesday is p Son's birthday. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. p Son, God has added another year to Pastor Sunday Ogidibo's life, and we will be celebrating and we will be worshiping God on Wednesday. We will have a special worship, worship session by 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Please make sure you join us for that. It's going to be another time in God's presence, another time to soak in God's presence and just appreciate God for all that he has done for us, all that he is doing for us. We don't take it for granted. Also, we have healing school on Friday by 9 a.m. Please feel free to connect with us on that. Healing School is right here at the Purple Place. So if you're in Abuja, just put in the Purple Place on your map and it will bring you straight down here. And you can join on Healing School. It's not just for those that are looking for healing, but if you want to know more about healing, if you'd like to get more insight, if you want to, you know, get into that space, you want to receive that unction, it is a great place to come and hear anointed teachings, to hear anointed, impart, uh, receive anointed impartation, and to be uh, birthed in that ministry of healing. So we invite you, we welcome you to come on down for healing school. And also, if it's your first time, we would also welcome you to join our online campus. So on our online campus, we engage with you, we post the declarations for the week, and a lot goes on there. Those that have been there can tell you we've had giveaways. And yes, the giveaway is in your currency. Whatever country you're in, we will give you that. So you don't want to miss out on the amazing things that happen on the online campus. So please, please, please head on down. The link is being displayed for you on the screen. So you can feel free to follow that link um, and head over there, holyhill.mn.co. Fill in your details, you'll be added to the online campus and you'll get all the juicy things. And also, the, when, on Wednesday, we often have Wisdom Lane with Peace on, where he shares some extra tidbits of knowledge. No, it's not online, but yes, it is on the online campus, so you don't want to miss out on that. Make sure you're there. 
our prayers continue we pray on prayer plug we pray online on prayer plug on mixlr the handle of prayer plug the link will be displayed for you feel free to join us for that we pray every three hours around the clock so 12 a.m um, west african time 3 a.m west african time etc uh, 6 a.m 9 a.m 12 noon um, 3 p.m 6 p.m 9 p.m and on and on around the clock please join us as many prayer windows as you are able to join us for um, the prayers and we would always always encourage that you make sure you have your own personal time of prayer and communion with god but there is always something about that congregational prayer so join us for as many prayer windows as you can again it's being displayed on the screen for you if you head over to uh, mixlr um, you'll find us on their prayer plug we'd love you to join us for that don't forget, if it's your first time, please let us know so we can celebrate you. We can give you a shout out. I hope you've been blessed by the awakening. It has been an amazing time. God has taught us through his servant. He has opened doors for us. He has brought so many ministers to speak to us, to minister to us and to teach us. So please, we would encourage, go back, listen over and over and over again. To the messages that have been um, spoken listen to the messages over and over again and i guarantee you there's always something extra that you will pick as you listen to the messages you will listen and you'll be like was i there when this was said i don't remember this being said that's the power of the word the spirit will constantly and like um, and as was said during the awakening the spirit is constantly digging the river of the spirit is constantly eroding and bringing out deeper and deeper treasures and secrets in god's word so please go back the messages are available um, our mess all our messages are available for free download on speaker um, the qr code is going to be displayed for you so that you can scan it and get access to all our messages they are free f-r-e-e -E, free we are not charging you one cent so you don't want to miss out please head over to the link being displayed so you can access all our messages and listen to them over and over again and of course whatever platform you're watching us on facebook or youtube we leave the messages up there so you can listen to them over and over again both the messages from the awakening and every other message please make sure that you don't miss out on it it has been a blessed blessed week god has done amazing things this week and we look forward to your testimonies if you have any testimony please feel free to share it so we can celebrate with you you can also send your testimonies to our number that will be displayed on the screen all right now let's head into the main auditorium as we close service and i'll see you at the end of service Wow, you're welcome. Thank you for celebrating. We have Pastor Sam here, and we also have Pastor Biola here, the pastor's Kabusa. And we have Holy Hill Church, Gateway, Guagualada Center. Whoa, good to have you guys. We have Pastor, pastor Paul, Imafido, and Pastor Moses here, pastoring Gateway Center. And finally, we have Pape, Holy Hill Church, Pape. Ah, uh ah. -uh. And then we have our very own Pastor Jane here that pastors Papi Church. Hallelujah. And we have here what? Only you church. Go, go, go. <laughs> Let everyone one of us let's celebrate ourselves. Let's celebrate ourselves. God has it's been a wonderful time in God's presence. It's been an awesome time. It's been a glorious time. And it's a launching out into a new season. We can't we have to keep hearing this and every one of us we are stepping into that new season you don't have a choice tell your neighbor you don't have a choice you have entered one chance of new season of more even if you don't want more because you were attended you have more in the name of jesus amen so this wednesday wednesday 17th april is what is going on 
So we are going to be having a worship service here from 5.30 p.m. I beg every one of you, please be here. Let's come and honor our pastor. Let's come and celebrate him. It will be so joyful to have us if we are this many, you know. And we're going to have some special ministers that he's, he, he wants to come and attend, for them to attend. So please, let's be here on Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. It's good. Let's celebrate his birthday. Let's celebrate what God has been doing through him, touching all our lives. Hallelujah. And then Friday, on, on Friday, we have the Elian School, 9 a.m. We are here every Friday for Elian School. So if you know anyone that is sick, even you yourself can come and listen to the word. You know, the word is never too much. Come and get taught on Elian. Hallelujah. Amen. I celebrate every one of us. Thank you for making this work. Thank you for showing up. God bless you real good. So I will invite Pastor James as we close now. Hallelujah! Has it been a great conference? I want you to jump on your feet without excitement. Glory! We'll just do two prayers. And while we're at it, I would like to invite our honorable choir because we're going to end this service on a high. We need to go with this joy. It's been seven intense days and we're not the same again. Hallelujah. So can we quickly just lift our hands and just thank God for day one to day seven. Whether you've been part of it here online, I want you to just, can you just give him thanks? Give him all the praise. Thank him for everything that you have received. Knowing you're not the same again, you're changed forever. hallelujah and now this second prayer can you hold someone for me with that person that's the old church joining hands together i want us to just thank god for our pastor let's thank god for a man of god a man of vision and as we thank god for his life we pray for increased strength would you please join me let's do this together father we thank you for giving us a man after your heart pastor sondo gidigo and pastor chaco we thank you for their lives and we thank you for the strength that you have given to them thank you for increase and multiply strength thank you as they set their hearts to do this work you will continue to lift them up you will cause them to see the things that you have in your mind for holy him ministry thank you precious Father, in Jesus' name we have given thanks. Hallelujah. Yeah, sorry, I, I forgot. Um, I want to invite everyone here. Um, I will see you on Wednesday. Um, I don't know if they announced it, but I came out to invite you personally. Please, don't be under pressure to bring a gift. The gift I want is you. You understand? So just come and join me to praise God and worship. I will lead a session myself. Um, so Solomalange will be here. Moses Akko has confirmed that he will be here. Chooks will be here. Chooks will be around them. Oh, you're not around. Then Ekene. Will be here and other people will also be here, but those are the confirmed. Um, Moses Ako, um, K String did not confirm. If we see him, we'll allow him to lead us in worship. Um, so please, I want you to join me and please take out time between now and Wednesday. Pray for me at least five minutes every day. Is that okay? Five minutes, don't just five minutes. Thanksgiving and praying tongues, Pastor Jim. Hallelujah. We've prayed for peace on today, right? So don't forget, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and continue to pray. Amen. So before we rejoice, I would like us to put our hands together as we welcome our first timers. If it's your first time, we already welcome you. Can you please just come to the front? We want to lead you to our welcome center and give you a gift from the church. Are we rejoicing that they came? Yes, please come with your bags and everything you came to church with. Hallelujah. Let's keep clapping and rejoicing over these beautiful ones. Father, we thank you for bringing them to us. 
Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And the blessing of God rests upon you. The blessing that has rested on us this week is seen and evident in your life. In Jesus' name. We have our beautiful sister over there. Sister Muche, she's waving. Please, can you just go with her? She will lead you to our welcome center. Over there on my left. That should be your right. God bless you. So are we ready? So we're going to rejoice for three minutes. Please come up, come up, come up. You dance after three minutes, we'll shout hallelujah. And if you want to stay dancing, you stay. If you want to go home, have a good, good day. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to be rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Thou alone art worthy to be praised. 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 Me so A week it has been god has been amazing oh hold on one second hello yeah oh great that was heaven calling said i should let you know your blessings are landing on your doorstep right now your increase is landing on your doorstep right now yes heaven has sent out the parcels they are on their way to you from this week from tomorrow you're going to begin recording the testimonies god can't wait to bless you you couldn't wait he has already sent everything out right now thank you so much for joining us for this week of the awakening it has been a really awakening week eyes have been opened we have begun to see deep into the heart of god all that he has in store for us all that he wants us to have so once more thank you for joining us don't forget to join us on wednesday as we celebrate peace's birthday have a blessed blessed rest of your day relax and rest then when you wake up listen to the message again and receive another extra word from god god bless you my name is ngozi otai me this is holy hill church the purple place in abuja and we're signing out on the awakening 2024 god bless you Jesus!
God, great 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 God. Give the Lord a hand. Hey, say I saw so wonder Jesus they do us. Give the Lord a dance. Seve, 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 seve. I saw so wonder Jesus they do us. So so wonder Jesus, and you got bully and high. Yeah, 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 Oh, <laughs> Thank you. 